There you go. Good afternoon, everyone. Coming to you live from Sunray Lanes in St. Paul, the CBA match play portion of our tournament. We had eight games of qualifying. Cut to the top 24 because we had 90 bowlers today on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. 90 bowlers came out to play. And we use a pattern called radium. 37 feet, 24 mils. You think you'd be able to hook the ball. Technically, you would want to play this pattern outside. You want your uh, you know break point to be down the lane when the ball comes off the pattern around six boards, something like that. Not everybody did that to start with, because a lot of people can't, I guess, or didn't read where they should play. And it got really brutal. So it took 101 under to make the top 24 cut. And during uh, this match play now, you see if you're watching these bowlers, there should be all playing out, right out by the channel, depending on how much they hook the ball. You actually got to be straight up the boards. You can't swing it out to there. So it's going to be tough, but I'm going to read you the scores and uh, let you know the leading qualifier, Keo Kean was 228 over. Second, Brady Stearns at 120, 112. So he had 116 pins over the second place bowler. Unfortunately, this particular tournament which we always announce what we do differently at the start. Uh, no carryover pins. So it doesn't help Keel, but it helps everybody else that uh, just snuck into the match play. Uh, third place, Jordan Monins at plus 107. Fourth, William Jones, plus 77. Fifth, Zach Mitchell at plus 72. Brett Newman was sixth at plus 24. Josh Kennedy, seventh at plus 23. Thomas Cleveland, plus 16, was eighth. Those are the only eight bowlers plus today. <laughs> then we got uh, Clark Polzer was ninth at minus 19. John Holmes, minus 24, was 10th. 11th, Ron Kish, minus 25. Matt Flown. Minus 12, minus 28 he was. He was 12th place at minus 28. Aaron Powell, 13th at minus 39. Chad Nelson, minus 43 was 14th. Jason Cragen, minus 46 was 15th. Dave Ullman, minus 49 was 16th. Matt Payne, minus 60. Greg Strike, minus 70. Cody Larson, minus 71. Ben Witt, Minus 75, I believe that's his first cut that he made. He was 20th. Nick Clough, all the way from Ryan Lander, Wisconsin, minus 80. Justice Shield, the better half of the Austin York Justice Shield duo, was 22nd at minus 82. Phil Stelmacher was 23rd at minus 93. And Jim Spigner rounded out the top 24 at minus 101. He was only 329 pins away from the leader. <laughs> then we had uh, five other cashers. Actually, six, seven other cashers because there was a there was a tie. Also, Dalton Gatlin minus 105, Ryan Killinen minus 112, Matt Edwards. Dan Chambers, Justine Brookover was 29th at minus 122. And we had a tie for 30th and 31st at minus 138. Fun bowling today, but they were pretty brutal. And it wasn't your typical what happens on a qualifying with CBA where you got to get left and kind of loft the left gutter and play like fourth, fifth arrow. He didn't have to do that today. Uh, I don't think anybody got inside uh, fourth arrow at all and he actually shouldn't have played there. Let's see, we're watching John Holmes right now, just left a 
And uh, over on lane five, under, that was Brent Newman leaving a 10 pin. He's using some dull urethane. A lot of urethane going down the lane right now. Funny, Brent Prentice. Which channel are you talking about that they're playing near? Oh, it's usually the left, but this is the right channel. This is a tough pattern, like I said. Um, different on a singles tournament compared to a team tournament. I mentioned a few people, this would have been a pattern that he put out for some team tournament somewhere. And our tournament team was bowling. We'd be playing out by the gutter. We'd be playing out by the channel. And we would open something up, I believe. Might not have had something very good to the first game. You know, during the shadow balls, we would have taken something dull, tried to break that down out there. Then we would have maybe chained ball, moved in just a hair, but we still would have been able to play out off that, and I think we would have done very well. A um, little different on a singles tournament because a lot of people, either they didn't read where the pattern is where you should play, uh, can't play out there, don't want to. I was talking to Jason a little bit ago. What usually happens, right-handers, they always start around the track. Just stay between first and second arrow. And if the ball <laughs> hooks a little bit in there, they move left. And if it doesn't hook, they just take more ball out. Like during practice, they could sand their balls or scuff them up a little bit still. And when they do that, um, they're just going to be in. I bowled next to Chad Nelson all day. He must have went through about eight, nine different bowling balls. Game and a half worth of urethane, possibly. That I know not possibly that he did use. Uh, he only had a couple of big games, but he, being the big spare shooter that he is, he had nothing under. He had a 168 game and one 234 game and a 2 1. Otherwise, uh, yeah, he just kept the ball in play and as much as he possibly could, and he was very good at his spares. But yet, saying that, he also just uh, was 14th at 43 under, so. Brady, Brady Stearns, I uh, crossed with him a couple times. Uh, he was second, qualifying. Use urethane for the last four to five games is trust the old pitch black or whatever it is that he uses. All right, we got uh, your tournament director, Jason Hansen, coming into the booth. I took a trip, Tom. You did? I took a trip to Green Bay. Oh, would you, wasn't watching football, was it? So a customer of ours, uh, Marty Mellon, uh, oh, yeah. a guy that's, uh, you know, kind of a, a good bowler up in the St. Cloud area. Big bowling, I know Marty. Yeah, bowling guy. Uh, he's a shareholder for the Packers. And so he had shareholder tickets. And he asked me, you know, a couple weeks before the shareholders meeting, you want to go? I said, sure, that'd be cool, something different. I've never seen Lambeau inside. I bowled the Masters at Green Bay, but it was 20 below, and they weren't given tours. Uh, you mean so it wasn't anyway, a football game going on then? Oh, OK. No. Uh -uh. So uh, anyways, uh, like three days before the meeting, he says, I can't go. So he just says, you want my tickets? So Stacy and I just packed up and went to Green Bay. Okay, all right. So took a little trip. A little, uh, took in the shareholders while well, we didn't stay for the meeting. We toured Lambo. Uh, we bought some fun owners, Packers owners gear. Okay. Because you can only get it at one time a year and whatever, so. And you did it because you were there. And we did it just because we were there. Not because I like the Packers at all. Oh, it's good to hear that. We, uh, we just bought it to make fun of people, kind of. <laughs> Okay. My son-in-law had me pick up a couple things because he uh, went to college with a couple guys from Wisconsin. He still plays poker with them, and they're huge Packer fans. And he wants to wear the obnoxious Packers owner hat that they can't get while he plays poker with them, right? So, okay. So we bought some gifts like that. But then I messaged Tom Corbin and said, 
I know you collect Harley Davidson <laughs> stuff. Have you ever been to the Harley Davidson in Green Bay? And you said, yeah, I have not I been have to the Harley not. Davidson store in Green Bay. And so I said, well, let me stop. And then okay. we're driving down the road. And 10 miles down the road, there's I another Harley Davidson store. You had never been to the Harley Davidson in, well, I don't even know what name it is. But <laughs> anyway, so I have. Uh, Two black Harley Davidson t shirts. And two poker chips. Uh, two poker chips, because yes. that's what I collect yes. also. Well, thank you, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. I will be wearing these at some point when I ride my motorcycle like sometime it. in these next couple of months, or I will still. I actually got out the last couple of weekends. I can't today because I was bowling, but right. I did the last couple of Sundays, so that was fun to do that. That is good. And it's funny you mentioned these black t shirts. So, um, Verna. You know, my lovely girlfriend who we just moved in together a year ago now. Um, when we were moving, and she said, how many Harley t-shirts do you have? And I said, quite a few. So she counted them. And she says, you got 82 of them. And I go, <laughs> you only counted the black ones. <laughs> because I have some red and orange and blue and green ones also. But, so yes, I have... Uh, 84 black ones now. Exactly, and I bet you, I probably have about 140 Harley t-shirts from around the world, around the city, the states, or wherever. I got duplicates of, of cities, but not duplicate t-shirts. Yeah. So, and uh, I will wear these proudly. Yeah, All right, you. thank you, sir. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We did take in a really cool brewery. Titletown Brewery. Oh yeah, okay. In Green Bay, uh, it's upstairs in kind of an industrial building, you know. So uh, really, really nice, like upper level patio outdoor. It was yeah, it was a, it was a fun trip. It was a cool place. Well, I have been to Green Bay um, for well, of all things. The Green Bay YMCA needed lockers once. I was going to say, what's about, the lockers? about 15 years ago. So I went there and uh, yeah, I toured. Uh, I didn't tour though, but we got to walk in, but we didn't get a full tour, but it was kind of open, I think. We got to walk like, there was a restaurant inside there, I believe. So we got to, we went there to eat and then we got to like see the whole field, but not not a tour of down under or stuff, right. whatever. But um, there's a lot of, a lot of, um, Nostalgia there, and if you're a Green Bay Packers fan, I can see why oh, yeah. you like going there. It's the mecca if you're a Packers fan. Correct, yeah, correct. For just a football fan in general, it's well worth the tour. Yes. And, and seeing it is a cool stadium for sure. It's just one of those things where if you're a, from Minnesota and you're a Vikings fan, you don't like the Packers. Or the Bears, or the Lions, or Tigers, or right. whatever. Yep, anything divisional. Why is Carl Campo watching from afar? Doesn't he always come here and watch Brady Stearns bowl? He should be here right in the back cheering him on. Brent says, why every time do I tune in or they play on the channel? I discussed that with him. I said, usually it's the left channel, <laughs> but today it's the right channel. <laughs> I mentioned that because Sam Lanto and I talk about all the time that the qualifying, it always gets the fourth or fifth arrow to loft in the left gutter. And I go, today it wasn't. Yes. Uh, and I don't know if anybody got inside a fourth arrow. I was pretty much straight up 13, 14, 15 at the end. Uh, I couldn't have done that earlier. I bowled my best when I was in there. I, I mean, I, t I was telling Chad, if we had six more games, I would have made the cut. I was just getting stronger, yeah. people going on. They were coming to you. They were, yeah. I finished like 180 to 20 to 20 to sneak out a senior casher. senior casher. Now, if I would have tried that hard to start with, I might be out there bowling right now. Why didn't I try that hard to start with? You knew how long of a day it was going to be. Yeah. What a grind it would turn into. <laughs> yeah, maybe, whatever. And Carl Campos says he's working. No, he's not. I'm going to talk to Brady. Where is he? I don't believe it. I don't either. Isn't the liquor store closed? It's a Sunday. Oh, wait a minute. That's why Bob Marguette got out of the liquor business. Because they're open Sunday. Yeah, I ain't <laughs> opening up on Sunday. I'm going to sell everything. I have yet to need, the, I've yet to have the need to buy alcohol on a Sunday, other than at a bar or go out somewhere. Sure. But to make to have some at home, I was smarter to make sure I was stocked up. But 
if I ever got to a point and we're coming home from somewhere and I need to stop, I'd like that they're open on Sundays. Yeah. If you do, you can. Correct. Carl, close at 6. Well, you'd get here by 7.15, just in yeah. time to watch breeding and step ladder. Yeah, you can watch the whole step ladder. Yeah. So I'll see you shortly. Yeah, easily. That being said, and I know you said 90 entries, you know, and you talked about how many people were out. But it was early on when we were taking in the entries and I was setting up the live stream that, you know, Stacy was coming out going, well, we need more sheets. We need more sheets. So I knew it was filling up pretty quick. But then we started looking at the demographics of it. Um, 15 seniors, uh, 9 I think it was nine or ten or nine or ten females, right? So there were three, four, three, four bonus senior cashers, two bonus female cashers. I mean, it's good for everybody. Yes. Right when everybody shows when up. When more people show up, it's good for everybody. There's Thirty people that cash in the tournament today. Twenty-four that are bowling in front of you right now. And then there's another five that took home a check. Thirty-five. And then yeah. the four bonus senior to two bonus female. Yeah. So that was like 36, 37, 38 casters somewhere yeah. there. So, and that's where we pay one for three. We talk about that a lot. A lot of big, big tournaments at first place being way up there. Uh, they usually pay one for four or one for five. We, as a, an organization, um, being that we have 12 tournaments a year that we run, we have to make sure that we... Um, we want more people to make some money. And if we've talked about this forever. You want to have some money if you win. Of course, you want to win some money. You know, your second, third, fourth, whatever you want to get. But if you're here for the money, you're bowling it for the wrong reason. The money comes with it. If you win, you're going to remember that title forever. But you, you'll, you'll spend the money and you don't know. Yep. Yeah. Because so. it's never life-changing money in bowling, not even at the top. You know, we're just not that sport. No. No. But we this, are not live golf. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll sign on for a million. million. And he says no, no, man, that's something. Yes, I know he doesn't need the money, so I, I well, understand that. I guess, so the amount didn't guy. matter. Yeah, I understand that. That is almost a billion dollars. I see. Yeah, it's amazing. That's I can't that's, even fathom that kind of money. Almost a billion dollars. Come play golf for us for four years, please. Yeah, and then win some money golfing. This is just... They can win a million dollars in the team yeah. aspect per person. I mean, it's crazy. They yeah. can be the worst golfer on the course that day and take home a million dollars. Yeah. Wow. So. Yeah, they're on the sport. Hey, Zach Andreessen, I'll tell you... Uh, Keo Kean led qualifying at 228 over, and then Brady Stearns was 112 over. Um, they were first and second, but there were no carryover pins today. So we're just starting, this is the first game of match play, and this doesn't, you know, doesn't matter what you did, except that you probably feel more comfortable on the lane than some of these other guys, but then other people sanded bowling balls, they got your thing, watched, and figure out where to play at this particular time. John Holmes just walks by me and says, I would have killed him. You, you did bowl today. Oh, I did bowl today. I didn't kill him. <laughs> well, I did for three games. But that's when I... So my biggest issue, uh, I set it out 190. I was able to use my master zen, and I was able to hook the ball out by the gutter, four, five, six, this, or whatever. I wasn't getting out to one or two. And at one open in there, a two, eight, ten, or something like that. And then I go to the next pair, and I didn't. the ball would not hook at all. And I'm, I'm assuming that whoever's on that pair didn't play out right and then also okay so then i got to move in and i tried moving a little bit more that didn't work and so then and i kept the more i moved left and i got right into the track and it hooked 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 i didn't know what ball to use moved back out then all of a sudden I, i'm talking to chad nelson he goes hey you want to take some pointers and i go well yeah after 140 130 150 please uh yeah but so we talked about some stuff but then where i got started playing a double in the tenth where he said oh I guess I got to back up I'm, I'm bowling a mat I'm bowling against uh, Kenny Worm 
bowling against Kenny Worm, we're on the same pair. We're in the third frame. We got 32 in the third, each of us. He goes, hey, you want to bet a dollar? So, sure. We both strike in the fourth. Okay. Then we both open in the fifth. So we both got 56 in the fifth. And then we both, then we're tied in the seventh, we're tied in the eighth at like 92. <laughs> and we're, they got this big pillow fight going on. And that's when Chad come up to me and he said, hey, you want to do something? So you get in the ninth frame, Kenny opens with a split. And I throw mine at, at a move where Chad tells me to throw. I didn't really know exactly. It was right through the nose, but it broke up the split and I pick up a spare. Kenny's back there saying, split, 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 whatever. Pick up a spare. In the 10th frame, he spares. I strike. Then I get another strike. And I go, Chad, you should have told me earlier where to play. But, so I end up with 139, but I won a dollar. And But then where I was playing then, that didn't really, uh, didn't really stay there. And when I got down to... I tried on 23, 24, had like 170 game. Then I got down to this low end of the house and I moved into around 13, 14, 15, trying to keep the ball straight through the heads. And then I seemed to have a lot of room. Not a lot of room. Well, I was more room. comfortable. I had room, yes, because yeah. I could get it out a little bit and it held a little. If I still skidded it too much, it was washed out. I could miss the head pin. I got really good at picking up the 124, 1248, 1247. I made the mention to uh, Payne early, maybe game two-ish or something. Um, I, I, we were just talking about how he was going, whatever, but then I said, I sure have seen a lot of head pin spares, right? I mean, it, it was a pattern where the whole chunk was always in play. Um, oh, geez, right, easily, yeah. Right, right? I mean... I didn't to, do that today, to but... Miss uh, right, then the miss left, yes. the vice versa was super easy to do, and it was all over the place. It was These uh, short patterns do that, I think, more than any other. Uh, yes. We talked about that tendency of the righties to want to move in. They see friction then. They want to move left or, you know, um, and that then I think kind of a lot of time lends itself to that over-under reaction. The pattern's so short that a miss in when you've already moved in gives you no room. Correct. Miss out that hangs, you get the wash out or whatever, and there you go. Long patterns just don't, I don't, I think more than anything, the long patterns just give you the, uh, I didn't get there. Yes. You know what I mean? I just didn't get it to yeah, look didn't up. Get, I didn't yeah. get it to the pocket. So you leave more of the light washouts, two eight tens and stuff. It but. stayed more on line. Now you didn't know what it was going to do. Yeah. So my, one of my first, uh, let's see, it would have been in the, uh, been in, uh, I don't know, second, third game. I left a one, two, four, or no, I left a one, two. And I decided to use my strike ball that I was using. Oh, I'm just going to move a board or two right, and then, just, yeah, well, I missed the head pin left. So then I told Chad, I said, well, I'm not going to use, I'm not going to use my strike ball <laughs> for those one, two pins. I can't tell you how many spares I've picked up, head pin type spares with a spare ball today, yeah. that I would never yeah. do that, because you can't. just move right, move left, and whatever. Yeah. I, I even, although, I missed a five pin with the spare ball. I only left one five pin today, and for one. I was, no, I take that back. I left no, I was one. I was one for two. But I, the one I, first one I left, I knew that if I threw my strike ball, I'd, I'd miss it. So I threw my spare ball at it, but I had no idea where to stand for it. <laughs> so, so I missed it left. And of course, John Holmes has to see it. Hey, Corby, I saw that. What do I supposed to you know, give him a drink or whatever? The hell, I don't know. <laughs> you know. No, I saw a lot of spare balls, a lot of plastic. Yes. Going at the head pin today uh, on the second shot. I got good at it. <laughs> yeah. I got yeah. good at it because I knew where to stand, and if I threw it, like anything, we talk about this, another one where uh, spare balls, if you hit your target, you look at it, pretty much goes there because it, it's a, it's either urethane or plastic or right. or whatever, something, so it's not going to hook. Um, that, that's exactly what happened today. It was online and stayed there. So we're just watching William Jones here with that really dull urethane. I think that's a urethane ball. Well, yeah. I know you said it to, uh, to Zach when he asked who's leading. You know, nobody probably really leading quite yet that we know of because it all started over with right. the match play. No carryover. But I think we're going to see a whole different ball game here in the match play. Uh, I actually said that earlier on too. Um, 
I can't remember who I was talking to, but I said I, I think when they get into the match play, we'll, we'll actually maybe see some better scores. And as I sit right here, I mean, I've got 240 with a 190 right there. Yeah, and a 230 uh, to 160. Five, right? Um, I mean, the 190 would have been a high game on a pair of seven people. Yeah, yes. Oh. Game one earlier yes. today. So the bowlers learned, uh, you know, during qualifying what was good. These are the best of the uh, ones uh, that were here today. today yes. So they probably made some smarter decisions along the way as well, in general, or at least kept it in play. And they more. probably threw the ball better, too. Yep, yep. So I just think we might see a little, this pace could change a little. This pattern actually can score pretty good if you can attack it the right way, and, well, then, and multiple people do. But as soon as 90 people are throwing willy-nilly all at it, um, it, it, it gets ugly quick. So I just found out that uh, it's Matt Flo's birthday today. No way. Uh, way. I know these things. I mean, huh. I, and these things just like, pop into my head once in a while. But anyway, made that announcement. we should have. We might do that. But if I see him, and I'll, so Brian, uh, Matt was here. You weren't here. But I want to know how he come out. How did your son get that nice head of hair and you don't have any, Brian? I want to know how that happened. Because... Well, I guess you just saved it all for him. Yeah. Or it's on your wife's side, one or the other, whatever. Right. But, uh, well, brought, let's be honest. I mean, I'm not a big judge, but, I mean, Matt's a lot better looking than Brian. Anyways. Well, I was trying to say that. Yeah. you know. Uh, the, Let's not sugarcoat it. No, okay, we'll just say that. He yeah. must take after his mom a lot. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Probably nice, too, like his mom. <laughs> 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 so, Brian, I got, I'll try to get a hold of you one day this week because I know next Sunday... You're, uh, you got tickets for the Twins, and I'll in their valet parking that comes with those tickets, so I'll make sure you know how to get to that valet parking area and what to do. So I'll, uh, I'll talk to you someday this week and explain it to you. Boy on screen, a couple of good shots to start these matches. He lane five with big four for oh, Williams. Wow. Cody in the three, six, nine, ten. I would not want to think about throwing a three, <laughs> six, nine, ten right now. Oh, no. No chance. I was talking to somebody earlier today. Uh, oh, it was Scott Anderson, the lefty. He left the uh, 2478, whatever. The lefty and, version. The lefty yeah. version. And he picked it up. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's a t yeah. He picked up and he said, wow, I didn't want to shoot that at all. I go, that is the toughest spare uh, leave that's not a split yep. of anything out there, anytime. Yep. Tough or easy. So I walked up and down while people were practicing today to kind of get some insight of where they were playing and what they were doing differently from, uh, you know, the qualifying yeah. tilt, you know, now what they're trying to do. And everybody was scuffing up bowling balls and scuffing up their uh, urethane stuff and uh, trying to play five thereabouts or whatever. They just saw a keyhole using an old blue hammer. Right. Who was, he was 228 over. Yeah. Now, who wouldn't make a guy think to bring a ball like that to a tournament like this well i have a feeling that Kiho saw the pattern and well he's one of the smart ones oh, yeah exactly when it came to making that decision yes uh Kiho throws a lot of your thing a lot of times Kiho definitely loves the butter they, yes none of these statements are anything anybody out there doesn't know so this is certainly a pattern he probably was uh, kind of licking his chops on when we announced it, you know? Look at that. But yeah, I mean, he's... And he did that all day. This is his wheelhouse, kind of. Yeah, that, you know? I, it is. But look, I, if there was somebody else's wheelhouse and off in the gutter is somebody else's, that's why we have all these different patterns that we put up. Right, you know? yes, because we don't want to favor the... It's parity. Correct. You if, know, we, if you just put the same the pattern process. out all the time, yeah. then the same people would be would be winning scoring all the time whatever so uh sam i uh i finished 180 to 20 to 20 to sneak out a senior casher and not only that as bad as i bowled for a four game stretch i missed making the cut by like about 80 pins and i had a 130 a 140 and two 150s in there i missed one single pin which was a uh five pin i mentioned that uh, but I left a bunch of other junk here and there. Missed about five other easy spares. And other than that, um, oh, yeah. Sam, 
this would have been in your yeah, wheelhouse. Exactly. You Sam, should have been you here. You would have killed him. You would have killed him, Sam. That's good. Yeah. Did you it's all good? No there? Sam, just roll it up softly outside of five. That's where it should have been, where you should have been playing. I couldn't get the ball to hook enough. The first game I was okay. I had like 190 and the ball hooked back. I actually left a, I go spare, strike, solid nine strike. So I could have had a turkey in there or whatever. And then it started to carry down a little bit. And next game, I couldn't get the ball to hook at all. And I know, Sam, you tell me this all the time. Well, then your feet weren't far enough right. And I kept trying to get free. You were in my thoughts, Sam. I was trying to get my feet far enough right. But then I had to almost look into the gutter to get the ball up two or three. And I, just, I couldn't do it today. So I have to practice it if I see this again. And well, we'll see something similar. Won't be this one probably, but. Yeah, we'll I'll see this again. Uh, we'll see something similar to it. Well, what's good about this is uh, you didn't have to loft the left gutter. That's at yeah, the end. For sure. You bet. Get writer. I know. Come on, Sam. Right. You should have told me that like at 9.30 this morning. It's so easy, though, when you take to the lanes for shadow balls and the back ends are crisp. You got 10 minutes to line up. Today, 15, but that meant the same. Same, same amount of shots. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, you, you sit there on that, that first game and you have time to get lined up and, and there is fresh you know uh, fresh back friction. end yeah, yes it's, right it's all good and then eight shots into the first game it starts to change but you don't even notice it that first game lots of times you hit game two and then you just go oh i'm in a different center well no this has been transitioning <laughs> that way all through that, game one that you and, just missed it and you don't also know um, who's on that pair probably didn't set them up the same way you did because the pair i was on most guys are trying to play outside of 10, not necessarily outside of 5. And um, so we kind of got them set up that way. But didn't work that way. Uh, didn't work that way game 2, 3, and 4 for me. Too much ball went left or right off my hand, and I wasn't in the pocket. And I chopped a 1 off the 2, chopped a 3, 6, or a 3 off the 6, 10 a couple times. Watching Keo with that blue hammer. And he even uses that blue hammer for the spare. He picked up a seven pin with that blue hammer. That's not fair for a guy to use the same ball for both <laughs> shots. That's Talk not lumpy about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's the only other guy that I know. But I said it's not fair. Didn't I just say it's not fair? It's not fair. fair. Yeah. For a guy to be able to do that. We need to make new rules. Yeah. The one two board is dry. That's what Sam's trying to tell me. Hard to mess that up. Yeah, but I couldn't well, get it to there at the right point, Sam. The one is dry. The one. There's some two to twos in this pattern. I, uh, I know I got a couple out there, but it was, when I got it out there, it wasn't straight up out there. It was like too, too much left to right out there. And then it was going away. And so when it was gone. I knew right away when I was. Yeah. We talked about that earlier. That was... The pattern doesn't lend itself to being able to get away from it, so. So let's talk more important things. What are the twins doing? <laughs> they can't seem to win. They can't, and it's not the pitching. I mean, they can say that they lose games to the pitching or whatever, as Nick Gordon just robs a home run from somebody because Emilio Pagan is pitching now. But other than that, they can't score runs. They need to start scoring some runs early, put some pressure on the other team, whatever. But they're not able to do that, and it's ticking me off, Jason. St. Cloud Rocks had a seven-game winning streak to end the regular season. Let's go Rocks. Yeah, let's go Rocks. Yeah, I, that's, <laughs> I'm okay because the Twins are just bugging me. But they still got, like, you know, a month and a half of the season left. And they're in, the, you know, the division that they can still win, so... Not to interrupt, but Jordan Monin's on the front six, six. or seven uh, down there. He's a little out of camera view. Well, if I get to seven and eight, maybe. 
Let's watch. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll be able to see him on uh, what will be 9 and 10, okay. so on the right of the screen. But, yeah, he's got the front six there. That's uh, that's yeah. really good on this. Well, we just got – you didn't see it, but we just uh, I just saw Keogh get another strike snapped out to 10, so I'm bored with watching him anyway. Yeah, no, it was time yeah. to move on. Yeah. So Jordan Monins. I really wish we could see Jordan, but – Anyways, yeah, he's stepping up. He'll be on 10. We'll be able to uh, see his ball shot. go yeah. down the lane there. Yep, he'll catch uh, it on the right well, I think it was about two, maybe three years ago. I bowled, I crossed with him, and I believe it was a Masters at Southtown when he was just starting okay. two-handed. Yeah, okay. And he's come a long way. Oh, yeah. A yep. lefty two-hander. Yep. Uh, he's got good balance. Yes, and he... Well, there's seven. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, I think the seventh pin yeah, fell. Yeah, it did. It yeah, did. It was kind of through the nose if you saw that. Yeah, I don't. Um, so I like his balance, and I like he's very controlled at the end too. He doesn't get some of the fast feet. He doesn't have a hop that some of okay. the players kind of yeah. somehow developed to try and accelerate uh, and get some speed on the ball. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, he's, he's obviously put in some work, and he bowls uh, collegiately, I believe, so I think that has definitely helped. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well. So he gets some pretty good training. Yeah. Some good yeah, coaches I think, there. I think he's collegiate now. I mean, I could be oh, I think he is, yeah. I think he is. He bowled in our summer league at Flaherty's. One week he had uh, 824, the first three, and then... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, there's yeah. eight of them. That's eight three, in a row. That eight, was just yep. solid. Um, he had 824 one with a 300 game, and then he might have had, I don't know, 230 or something after that. Uh, good set. And then, so we bowl, we bowl two sets, two three-game sets. So, I mean, if you shoot 800, 800, you had 1,600. Yeah. Which nobody's, I'm not sure if anybody's ever done that. Back to back. If somebody, yeah. a lefty did one time. Oh, in your league? In yeah. our league. Yeah. When we were at uh, Saxon years and years ago. But... Anyway, he had like 1575 or something like yeah. that once for six games, which is it's unheard it's of. not bad. Not bad, but to carry that much even. I remember when, uh, I think it was Eric's, Eric Schott's first or second year on his tournament team, but he had back-to-back -back 800 singles and doubles. Duluth. In, uh, yeah. in the state tournament. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I remember that, that. Yeah, that was fun to watch. I remember that. Nothing like a little 16-40 six-game combo there. Yeah. Off in the gutter. Uh, and uh, Cody Larson to just yeah, did, too. Yeah, easy to see that a bunch today with this pattern, too. Well, because if, if it doesn't hook, you got to get it out further. Yep. But those gray boards, or whatever color they are here, they don't hook. Just stay right there. Almost as if in a trough. Yeah. Almost. William Jones with a five-bagger. Just soft off his hand too with all those rounds. We talk about that. You get those soft hands, they just let the ball go. Uh, John Eats and I always talked about it years ago. You want to do like a lift and loft. Now you want to go like release roll, and roll, resist. Roll, roll, roll. Yeah. roll, roll release roll. and resist and let the yeah. ball do its thing. How do I roll this kick ball to you on the ground? How do, or with, soccer ball, right? I mean, those are the kind of analogies. With some that reps to get the ball. Yeah. I give it to a lot of students, right? It's like we're trying to just, as smooth as no bouncing, right? We're just trying to roll this ball on the ground. That flat spot you talk yeah, about. The to big get, flat yeah, the big flat spot. Yeah. Elongate it as much as you can. Yeah. I'd switch to William and you'll see, oh, that went in the gutter. Never well, mind. after Anyways. a five bigger. Yep. But, you know, that's the price you're going to pay when you're playing way out there. But I'm leaving it here because Jordan got the ninth on lane 10. So he is stepping up on here. On lane 9. On lane 9. With the front 9. Front 9. On not uh, anything too easy. So the last time on this lane, he caved in that little nope, funky. that was 10. He flushed 9. He's on the left lane again. So, oh, okay. Yep. All right. Yes, yep. you're right. Yep. He, uh, he did crumble 10. Yeah. But he was really good on 9. No, we'll see if you guys should be able to see it at the right of your screen. Yep. Lane 9. Oh, oh, trips the six pin forward. Kind he of a. He, I think he knew he got pretty firm. He wasn't. Uh, uh, that looked that to me from here it looked like it was a little firm. Yeah. Just didn't quite get there. Obviously it was. Cause it yeah. went down a little bit further, but uh, that's impressive though. Um, I, lucky carry, obviously on that one, yeah. whatever. But yeah. uh, so we'll see. Um, 
There hasn't been a game over 260. 268 is what, because I saw Keo had that thing, game three or four or something like that today. You got that in. That's what I, from here, I know I'm far away, but it looked like you got it in. But, you know, easy to kind of flinch. And do that. Eight or nine is yeah, uh, going to help him. Uh, along with the 40, I don't know what he had his first game, but he could be your leader. Yeah. Crack staff will get that. Okay. For us oh yeah, we got a good crack staff here. Yeah, you had, had your wife and daughter working today yeah, there. We had Jeez. the A crowd today. Yeah, oh yeah, we had the Which A one. Was needed for 90 people. Oh, amazing. Here we are in August. We had 90 bowlers, and the Twins are going to lose four to two, two outs in the top of the ninth. Come home with a one and four record on their West Coast to LA. West Coast trip. Dodgers, the Angels. Max Kepler, who's up right now, could make the last out. Who's struggling big time. He's got to do something or they gotta maybe start thinking about uh, benching him. They got him batting with a lefty pitching and he can't even hit righties. Jason Craig and he's keeping the ball in play. Leaves single pin here and there, picks them all up. And then as soon as I say that, he kind of hangs up a little bit, pulls one, crosses over. Watch William Jones. This should be right off the twig at about 45 feet down the lane, 40 feet down the lane thereabouts, and uh, should hook right back in for a strike. Well, it wasn't out as far as I thought, and then he was high. He might have flinched a little bit because uh, last shot he threw one in the gutter and then I'm not sure what he got the nine count on, but uh, we'll come back to come back Keogh. to watching Keo because yeah, uh, it looks like he's got the best game going now out of kind of what's up in front of us. Right. And just watching that blue hammer. How was it? Can you tell how he's got that drill? It looks like a little funky drill. I was gonna say it almost looks like an axis. You know, I was gonna say that. Like that you know, it, years yeah. ago, yeah. I had four blue hammers. One was drilled straight up, one axis weight, dull, and then same thing shiny. Okay. So I had uh, four blue hammers in my bag. And then, and then a year or two later, I had like four wine u dots. Same kind of thing. That was the ball, and that's what I had drilled oh goodness, that way. Oh, I love that ever. Wine yes. U I like the blue hammer, but uh, we won the Bug League at Ranham. Uh, the championship night, I had. Oh, the, the, the that the, league, yes, yeah, okay. Bug League, yep. I okay. had seven thirty something the last night, and that was all the blue hammer. Fortunate ah. that was uh, the real, the original one. I was on staff with Hammer at that time. And, um, that was. Uh, so you had the one, original, I had blue original blue hammer. Uh, Gary Arnson had had one uh, left over in the shop at Midway that he left behind when he left, and I kind of inherited thought, it. And might as well drill it then. When that league started, mm -hmm. I, I made it my year thing. Okay, that's so a, there's there's what you could yeah yep that's what you get sometimes with that. But I, I'm just watching his ball. I watched it the whole game because he's right here in front of us. He's on lane you know three and four, and that's where we're. we're Set up, set up yep. for the, and um, that's where the booth is set up here. So that's why we're watching so close. But it just he gets it going up, but it doesn't hook. It just gets rolling, and it's at the pocket at like 30 feet down the lane. I mean, it, and it just stays there. And it stays there. It doesn't do anything fancy. Takes his four or five steps, repeats shots, and uh, that's why he led everything today. Yeah. Well. We talked about 
being in control, staying out of trouble, right? All, right, all those right. things being the keys. That type of reaction will minus a 7-10 bad reaction here and there. It's going to keep you out of trouble a lot. But you got the match. You won the match anyway. Both the most that Cody can have is 206. Kia was 213. Although when you get that score, you want to at least spare the 10th, get those extra 10, 15 pins, whatever it is. With 24 people, it's going to be bunched up. Um, there's going to be people who win matches. Yeah, the bonus will probably become an important factor. you got to win four or five matches. Mm -hmm. I would have to say, if you're, if you're bowling really well, you can get by with, say, three or four matches. But otherwise, if you win four or five matches, you're going to have a chance to be up there with a chance to get to the ladder in yep. during the position around game. As long as those matches weren't the fluke 140 to 130 Well, win. right, Right, yes. but for sure, yeah, if you're going to win some matches with your 180, 190, 190 you'll be right up bonus, there. You bet. You'll be in contention. Ron Kiss yeah, sliding by a 7 pin for 123. Now, I was going to say, and as we look around, we mentioned right away, there were some good games, but let's keep in mind, that was game one. They had 10 minutes of practice. On the pair. Everybody got lined up, right? Those that probably have a good look are those that are still, like Cody's got a good look. 2 is a great game on this, right? Um, uh, how about 196? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two, two gutters in that game. <laughs> okay. But you know what I'm saying? We don't I mean, mean to laugh on it. It's 196 but, uh, with two gutters, right? I mean, he's, he's on a double and a turkey pins, there. You know? So he goes, uh, yeah, wow. So. Wow, he should have won that game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, but. But I mean, so he's got a decent look. And, and Keo at two teams got yeah. a good look. And obviously Jordan must have a pretty good look over there. Uh, you think? But I mean, there's still yeah. somebody with 90 in the eighth. Uh, that's Aaron uh, Powell. So we're 90 in the eighth I and can, strikeless. And that's, uh, you got like phone numbers up there. Yep. John Holmes said that to me one yeah, time. Yeah. You, got, you got telephone numbers up there. Is that, is that yours or somebody else's? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we mentioned, you know, Kish, 123. And that we're not yeah. poking fun. No, it's just means. that that can happen. Yeah, I, that's an easy game to throw. Uh, 142 on lane two, I don't know who it was. Uh, so, as much as we talked about the scores looking better, there's still a lot of struggle to be had. I'm going in for my, into my second game following Ron Cleveland. And I go, how'd you do, Ron? He goes, not very good. I had uh, 107. And I'm not picking on Ron here, not whatever. And I, but I go, oh, okay, well, you know, it'll happen. And so, he goes, the pair was tough. And it was, but I had 157. So, I went to Ron and I go... Oh, that pair wasn't that tough. I beat you by 50 pins. <laughs> <laughs> we had a little chuckle on it, obviously, yeah. because... Because uh, you're uh, pretty proud of 150. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the start of my downfall of 150, 40, 30, 50, or whatever. Kind of like what I had in there and trying everything. Well, not everything, because I didn't try what I ended up doing until like, game uh, six. Yep. They talk about Aaron, no, he just went strike in the ninth, strike in the tenth. And then five count in the eleventh. So uh, that's a, there was a, I think I saw a 101, a 108 game, a couple, a few games in the one teens. Yeah, I didn't see anything under 100 today. No, I didn't either. No. I don't think it was, maybe it was Cedarbell or maybe it was Clary's. We had a couple that dipped under 100 within the last few tries. I have to start looking at these scores. Now, granted, we don't bowl 10 games in qualifying anymore, but there were some records of the 10-game qualifying. Somebody one time was like 700 under Ooh. in a 10-game qualifying at Minnehaha once. That's 130. Yeah. That's right? because I mean, the guy that's... was a right-hander and he thought he he heard of something and wanted to bowl left-handed. Oh, well. So... But then another score. And it's, this, a big, it's a big uh, task to try to accomplish against this kind of uh, yeah, caliber right. of... Well, but there was 150 bowlers at that time then, yeah, which, sure. we, which we used to get all the time. Yeah. And then the one game, one time, uh, somebody was 360 under, and Steve Sir says, hey, that guy came full circle. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. So I didn't want to be half circle, but I almost was. I was 187 under. 
I have I have had a CBA where I have reached that number. Yeah. I've had the uh, I've, I've broken 300 one time that I can remember. It's not a really good feeling. No, Chad Nelson tells the story that uh, he kept a score sheet. The only score sheet he ever kept was his first one in Eau Claire, and he was 400 under. Ooh, yeah. Uh, yep. Now look at him. Yep. We talked about him today. I, well, I, I talked a lot with him because we were, he was right next to me all day as we were moving. And um, he, uh, somebody talked about his practicing. He goes, oh, yeah, I got a game and a half of practice in the last three years in league. <laughs> <laughs> He just bowls tournament after tournament, and that's what he does. Yeah, yeah. And he uh, throws in his basement. Practices in, into in the his, couch in the or, the, yep. or the pillows, whatever. He's got lane panel on the floor and a mattress at the end. and yep. So he takes a step and throws it? Uh, I'm pretty sure he takes a full approach. I think he's got like oh, a little so bit of... Okay. A little bit of lane. Okay. You know, 15, 18 feet. Oh, okay. Time. Then. Yeah. Some right. approach and, and release. Yeah. I uh, I had that in my old house. Yeah. I had my bowling hallway. Yeah. That I it was I actually didn't use it for that. I, I put plastic pins on the end and I you know use it for my grandkids to throw yeah. a plastic ball yeah. or the small little plastic thing at it whatever. But but I got the lane panel from Tim Dracula. I was talking about it and I was redoing my base. Hey, I could use that and I. It was a little bit wider, so I had to rip it down like three and a half inches narrower, and it was, uh, it was what, is it 15, 16 feet, 15 foot panels? 15, yep. Yeah, and then I needed a little, about another 18 inches to fill out the end, so I got a piece of masonite. That yeah. was, you know, so that was a pin deck. Sure. And uh, that's where I had down there, and the kids that's loved sweet. it. So I could have bowled on it, but uh, I might have ruined my walls. Yeah, yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would wonder I, what I those vision Chad set up probably a lot more unfinished than your house. <laughs> yeah, that would probably. Yeah. I kind of wonder what those people who bought my house what they think of that thing, if they if they left it there. <laughs> but I mean, they should have because it's it's actually just a laminate flooring. Oh, it's it's solid and all. I, it's uh, some I, of the best stuff. Uh, there I, is, I had honestly. to drill through and drilled into the concrete, and I used uh, I used um, countersunk. Uh, tap cons into the floor and oh it's solid in there whatever yep. then I put the baseboard trim around it so I mean you're not taking it up unless you take the baseboard up so why move it not going anywhere right I've built probably at least six workbenches or more out of lane panel it is some yeah. of the greatest wood not wood yeah that you could use for stuff Years and years ago, when I was uh, working with somebody else, we got lane panels, actually wood panels, out of St. Anthony Lanes. Oh. And when they closed up, that was a, one of the best places to bowl way back in the, as we started the, the St. Anthony Trio Classic Northeast League. Minneapolis? Northeast St. Anthony Village yep. is what it is. Yep. So um, we cut those, the actual wood panel into like 48 inch pieces. So it would be 48 by 42. Yep. And we made them, we put legs underneath them and sold them as work branches. Sure. And people bought them because there was, what, three and a half inch, by well, that time it was probably sanded down to about two and a half inch solid maple, right? Yeah, right. So they were good work branches. They were yep. solid. So. Yep. so watching Jason Cragen. You didn't see it. He's on lane three. Threw his first ball in the channel, and then his next one, he got to pull it through the nose because you, you just don't want to throw another one. Right. Eight or nine is better than zero. Zero. I want to see. We, we got Brent Newman on there. No, he's on lane four. I can get him on. I, I want to see where he's playing. Uh, and there's William Jones on two, and I think Keel's over on one, isn't he? Yeah. So we have to see what's going on there. But I'm curious to see what Brent's doing right now is that a, is that a is that a urethane ball that he's using i don't know enough about motive but the tank it's, orange. it's kind of it's orange right. thing I'm i don't not, know i don't think so I, the purple one is i don't know if the orange one is okay but anyway that one looked pretty good right there some motive fan let me know what is brent newman using yeah orange tank is that 
I'm pretty sure you're right. I think it's hey, a tank. Day, day Rona saying good evening. You know, I've been here so long, I didn't know it was evening. Oh, yeah. It is. Holy crap. It's, yeah. 607. Game three of step, or uh, match play. Uh, Jason, yeah. I will not be here. Come on. To the uh, end. You're a quitter. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Quitter. But I didn't quit bowling. <laughs> I snuck out the senior casher. The new revolt. Thanks. Oh, the, okay, thanks, Dayrona. Is that urethane then, or not? I would assume no. Is the tank line the only urethane that you throw, or that you guys have? Well, come on, hurry up, Darren. We need to know. Come on, uh, type faster. We're waiting. Ryan Savoy. Hey, good, Ryan. Good to see you. Oh, Darren, we know he's using New Revolt. Is it urethane? Yeah, you already. He already said. That's got it. Is his ears acting up again or something. something yeah. He's repeating himself. It is, it is not. not. Okay. I, yeah. All right. Is the tank line the only urethane line that is the motive there? And then Ryan Savoy, how'd you do in the race today? Or the other day or whatever. I kind of follow you, but I don't watch enough, and someday I'd like to get up and watch the race. Ah, thanks, Darren. Okay, now we got that settled. He's using a new revolt. See, here's another thing. All these new bowling balls that certain people get their hands on before. Easy. Tread lightly. I am treading lightly. <laughs> <laughs> as lightly as I can on this uh, subject. <laughs> um, first of all, I don't know how good they are. Nobody knows how good they are. No. So they get them. And if they're good, we all go, well, how can they get them for us? If they're bad, we don't hear about them. Okay. So. But, in saying that, um, I do know that the more new bowling balls I get, the better I bowl at that time. And I can't buy a new two or three bowling balls every couple of weeks. What? Or every month. Or I don't want to. Is that a better answer? Better. Yes. <laughs> because it's... That's the truth. <laughs> if I knew what they were going to do, that I would, uh, you know win or cash at every ball that I bought. Well, then they pay for themselves. Correct. But I still got to buy them to do that. Yes. So, that's all I'm going to say. I treaded <laughs> lightly enough, I think. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard I know it. Yep, I know. Uh, there's a lot of people, of course, that complain about much more so, let's say, on the large tournament scale for a lot of money and or at the USBC Open. Yes, correct. Right, you show up out there with something that the masses can't get quite yet, and that will be an issue with people, and I understand their, especially, their position. So my thing is on that is they come out and you can use them, but if somebody's had some that we can't use as a general public buying a bowling ball, it shouldn't be able to be used. That's my biggest issue sure. on that. Yep. Whether it's on the national USBC thing or even here. Because good or bad, okay, well, I like to have, well, you can't, sorry. That, I have that little bit of an issue. Yeah. And it seems like there's a lot of people on certain staffs, mostly ones who are pro shops, are all on some sort Without of staff, which they should be. If I'm a bowling ball manufacturer, I want every pro shop using what I sell. I want them so. to sell my stuff. Correct. Yeah. And only my stuff. Then now now as a pro shop owner, would you is that good for business? Yes and no. I mean rebates. Okay. Percentages. All of those things are part that happen like let's say when your pro shop becomes well, I'll use SBI Storm Products because that's who I'm with. Right. So we belong to the Storm VIP Club and that gives us rebates on our purchases, blah, blah, blah. My staff contract is nothing more than me getting a rebate on what I sell realistically. So they give me a, a small amount of money up front that I can spend how I want, but then I earn my money outside of that. 
Um, there's pluses and minuses to that. You want to take advantage of your programs, but you absolutely have to sell your customers the best thing for them. Right, and, and it might not be. Off. It might not be your product. Correct. That's yeah. a, that's what I was kind of yeah. getting at. No, that you uh, can't pigeonhole every customer that's right. going to fit an SBI ball into your hands. You have to be still, and that's where sometimes that becomes a little clouded, and maybe. Maybe not everybody does the right thing. I, I can't uh, speak for everyone. That's what I was going to say. I'm sure there's some pro yep. shop, uh, there's several pro shop drillers, them. as we call them, yep. who will uh, push that one Only. period. Yes. For their benefit. Correct. Of course. Um, you know, there's those two that uh, will also sell their staff balls. I mean, there's always people that are going to take advantage of the things they shouldn't when they get and no benefit. And somehow the the uh, whoever is the manager or whoever your rep is should know about that. Yeah, um, I think that there's a lot of internal policing that gets done. Well, yeah, you know, it, it, I can is. believe that. I can yeah. actually believe that there because is. people don't want to ruin it for themselves. Because if somebody's doing that, somebody else is, and you're not, and all of a sudden they take away everything and say, we're not doing yeah. this program anymore. Yeah. So. No, there's, I, I think the, the staff positions and I, I would truly believe this is across the brands. They police themselves a fair amount. Other you know, staffers watch other staffers a lot. Well, and that's no different than bowlers watching bowlers. And I noticed it all today. There were a lot of... Uh, you needed those 30. There were a lot of... Not a lot. There were a lot of people... It's, it's like golf. You police yourself in golf. For sure. You know, you know if you did right. So bowling happens. I watch some people. They, you know, the ball goes in a channel, bounces out. You hit the ten pin, seven pin, whatever. Undoubtedly, that person comes back and says, "Hey, somebody changed that score for me." And people will say that. Yep. And they just know that they, even though they, hey, did anybody see that? They're not. Somebody did see it, of course, because people are always noticing it. But, but people aren't trying to get away with anything. Now, maybe in a league, uh, with somebody. Maybe don't know whatever they might just whatever, but everything pleases themselves here. Most people, if they do something wrong, I know I didn't do that. I, I missed it, you know, whatever. Right. Uh, the, the machine comes down late. Either, uh, that I can see the the machine hit that pin or whatever. So for the most part, um, it, it, everybody's honest out here in bowling. You don't so. get anywhere by in, being dishonest. Well, and, and you might get somewhere short term, but I think it's everybody doesn't right, yeah, get so anywhere long term. No, uh, so. yeah. you know, using a ball that uh, drilled, that's drilled um, li illegal, and somebody else is going to see it, and they're going to say that because other people look at how, you, especially if you're bowling well. Hey, how's that ball drilled? Well, hey, you know, that's not or whatever. Somebody would notice that and say that. I can tell you in this house, uh, in league. While I was here in the shop, I met a customer that wanted to get a ball, and they were a no thumb bowler. And their uh, their current ball, as they were getting ready to start the season, was illegal now because it had a thumb hole in it. Oh, okay. Yep. Theirs actually happened to have a thumb hole and a weight hole in it. <laughs> well, so he was doubled up. And uh, anyways, ordered a ball, and of course it's back order. So you got two weeks, roughly, let's say, right, before this ball comes in. And he shoots 800 the next week in league with his other ball. That's illegal. And nobody really says much. Um, there's a little mumbling about it, but yeah. nothing really happens. But the next week he shoots 800. And then he, well, decides to talk about shooting back-to-back -back 800s with my illegal ball. And the next thing you know, they're both thrown. Yes, right? exactly, right, because he we couldn't leave ourselves. He couldn't leave well enough alone. Exactly. Start, yeah. And somebody else didn't like back to back 800s with the ball that's yeah. illegal. Yeah. Especially when you let us know about it. Yeah, them. right, yeah. Yeah, I agreed. So, I think we do a good job for the most part. So I bowl in a, in a, a handicap league, a classic bowl on Wednesdays in the fall. It's a league that I, uh, guys that I grew up bowling juniors with, and uh, both my brother, and then my sister-in-law bowls on another team, and along with my daughter. So it's kind of a family thing. Family and then fair. my other brother will sub once in a while. Sly and the family stone. Yeah, you know. They, so it's, it's you know I like that because it's a family thing. And uh, so there was a team that came into our league last year, 
never bowled before. In fact, they had sure thing. Their team name was called Neymar. And I had no idea what it was, but what it was was a, a soccer player, we Neymar. And so they had soccer jerseys, uh, different ones, but it said Neymar on it. Whatever. Yeah. So they're bowling for, I don't know, the first six, seven, eight weeks or whatever. And and they had using bowling balls somebody gave to them. Well, the one guy, two, two of the four were using, you know, were no thumbers and whatever. Yeah. And one guy's trying to do a two-hand or one or whatever. Well, turned out, obviously they're illegal, but I, I wasn't paying any attention. Somebody got really upset about it and saying, and the guy's going, I didn't know, you know, we didn't know, whatever. And one of your scores shouldn't count. And I go, wait a minute, let's, these guys didn't know. Can you at least tell them? So then uh, John Cryer, uh, um, whoever else has the shop, um, what's his name? I don't want to. At Saxon? No, this is right. at Classic. Oh, classic. Um, is that Tony? Tony, yeah. yeah. So, and I know John works up there, and his son Brandon's always there when yeah. I walk in, whatever. Yeah. So, so I went and talked to John and said, "Hey, can you? These guys didn't know. Can you? Can you take care of their bowling balls for next week and just have them plugged? Oh yeah. And so they, then they just plugged up the stuff that they were, you know, plugged the weight hole, plugged the thumb hole, whatever. And they just find these guys end up second in the league. They didn't care if the ball. They could use the house ball. It didn't matter to them. Yeah. They had no idea. They're just having some fun. And they're going, "What did we do wrong? Because somebody was complaining the wrong way because they got beat that night." And there was an 18-team league, so you didn't see these guys all the time. And I didn't pay any attention. I don't think I'd known them by this time. Sure. So I had to calm those people down, too, and say, hey, this is a handicapped league. We're not playing for, you know, millions of dollars. It's not a tournament. But, uh, yes, we'll get it taken care of. They, they shouldn't, but right. let's handle this the right way. Yeah. Different than what you were talking about. This Correct. guy knew yeah. and then bragged about it. These yeah. guys didn't know, and they were just having fun. Oh, the crack staff. Oh, okay. the crack staff uh, has not quite got our uh, totals out here after two games yet. 619, we're in our uh, third game of match play. Got here, uh, we started bowling at 9 o'clock this morning. I got here at about 8.15. Uh, showed up and there's I saw a few cars in a parking lot. Oh wow, this would be a good turnout. And then more and more people kept coming in. And then uh, Stacy, Jason's wife, says, "Hey, we need some more score sheets." Turns out we had 90 bowlers in the summer, August, at a 16-lane house. Now, granted, this is a really nice place, well run, well by uh, Robbie Lawrence. He promoted it. Had some flyers sent out, talked about it a lot, and some more and more people came out here to bowl. People should always give this tournament a chance. See how good you are, how bad you are, how you like. You want to better your game, you got to come out here and bowl in a CBA against the best. And they were brutal, and they were not easy. So I'm not sure how many people would come back because they were that tough. But then again, we don't want them easy. We don't want house shots. We don't want people coming in here just, uh, you know, having to, you know, having to shoot 230, 240 just to average that to make the cut. That's not what we want. So there's a fine line between making them tough playable, I guess is a good word, and then unplayable, which uh, that happened. A lot of people couldn't play in at all. But then again, Guys were 220 over, 120 over. Somebody's always going to score. Staff is getting our scores here, so I, I can't say what's going on until Jason gets the scores here. In the meantime, I'm watching Brent Newman just uh, strike. He was over there in lane three. Saw that strike. That was Brent for a turkey. We're watching Aaron Powell here. Uh, he's going to shoot at the 3 9. It's not, 
it's not a uh, a spear that right-handers shoot at very often. Oh, he's trying to back up at it. All right, well, that worked. I don't know if I would have done that way, but then that's why he's bowling, I'm not. So I can see it like another 140, 150 game over there. Uh, we had a good match. Uh, I thought we had a good match going on one and two between uh, Kehoe and uh, William Jones. 111 in the seventh. So I guess it's a 40 pin game. Not as close as I thought it was. William strikes here, put the pressure on Kehoe. Aaron throws a lot of ball. He can max out for 189, but John Holmes is going to win that match with, uh, well, he's obviously hoping for 220 if he doubles in a tenth. Strike over on three with Jason Cragen for a double. Put a little pressure back on Brent. And two, that was solid 10 by Keyhole after William Jones got the double. So, you gotta spare one of the two next frames to win that match. Otherwise, uh, William can strike out to win that. Soft release, you can't see that. I was lane four. That was Brent Newman. A little soft hand release, and the ball just kind of rolled end over end, it looked like. Almost got back solid in the pocket. I'm going to see John Holmes here and see where he, he's actually playing on the lane. If you can tell from here, that was about four or five up the board, and he's light. Either got to get it out further or hook it more, one or the other. Look at that, Verna Von Goltz is watching. Hey, Will Matafee, Verna's watching me, watching me talk. Does that make sense? Not really. No, I know, it doesn't make sense. Will Matafee just joined me in the booth here. Uh, I crossed with uh, Will one game today. We weren't bowling a match, but he didn't beat me, just so you guys know that. Um, but other than that, <laughs> just add it up, yeah. One of these days, uh, it'll count and you'll beat me. Verna, I'm not staying till the end here. It's already like 625. We're in the third game of match play. Uh, I'm not gonna stay for the step ladder, so I'll be home about eight if I leave here in an hour. That's long enough for, that'd be a 12 hour day being gone. Well, I mean, it is your bedtime around there, right? No, 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 no. Uh, you don't know Verna, we're uh, she's a night owl. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have one more beer. Well, you've heard that story before. <laughs> so what what are your thoughts of the real from going from qualifying to match play um, down this side? Okay, when we when we when we see when Jason puts out the 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 uh, notice that he's gonna re oil or not re oil, we don't really know what's gonna happen. It's we we know that's gonna happen. They're gonna re oil. We don't know how the shots going to be right yep. so is it good or is it bad are you asking me should they or shouldn't they have or is this just something that i'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing i'm more of saying like what you see different from ah okay i got you difference from qualifying to, okay to match play so i during practice we're doing the shadow ball before the match play here i was walking up and down talking to people who you know bold obviously and, uh, and what they were using what they were doing different now compared to the start of the day or in the middle of the day and people were sanding their bowling balls more people you and you're using your thing and being way out by the gutter yep uh i don't people didn't start out there which is where you should have started because of the way the uh the length of the pattern was on a short roll you should have been outside yep people can't don't think that hooks too much if you don't get it the right spot it's not hooking back so they go i can't play out there so a lot of those factors came into it, but these guys are the ones who bowled well, obviously, all day. That's why they're here. And 
Is anybody playing? Uh, nobody's playing inside a second arrow, really. Not at all. No. Like, I tried. I tried playing the middle, more of in between 15 and 20. I saw something in, in a couple shots in practice where it would, you know, it would probably get nine, and that's kind of my goal for the day. But um, it eventually would be there for about two frames, and then it would probably two, four, ten after that. Yeah, okay. But that happened playing out also. Correct. So yeah. I, I started out where I, I thought I should have, and I had like 190, and the ball was kind of hooking off, and we got the independent, go to the pocket. I left a one solid nine with some dead tens in here and there, and I went open for 190 some. Go to the next pair, 2810 first shot. Granted, maybe they didn't throw it very well. But then the oil had carried down. And so I think it carried down, and also, depending on where, who you was on your pair to start with where they played. If this would have been, I mentioned it earlier, if this would have been a pattern, uh, uh, a team event, yep. our 10 guys on my Laker team would have all been playing up the gutter with oh, some yeah. dull, and 100%. we would have stayed out there, and we would have made it a lot easier than it happens here now. I think the problem was when we were out there that it almost went more right if you were that far right. So if you, if you threw it, it wasn't hooking right away. So that was kind of the issue that we were having. And I'm not saying it's different from qualifying to match play. Usually it is with the re-oil. Usually right. Usually oh, it's yeah. a little bit tighter. Yes. Yes. But, um, and you're oiling the pattern over the pattern. Correct. Not the pattern over the house shot. Correct. Which is usually you know, a longer house shot here. So it probably had a little bit of that memory. So it Correct. made it a little bit longer. So when yeah. they re-oiled it for, uh, on the shot, on the shot yeah. made it more like the shot. And people... Are playing it more like the shot should be played too. Correct. But they're all dulling up their stuff or using your thing. I had a couple of people say, I'm going to sand my balls to more 500 or less or 360, than that. whatever. Yep. Yeah, right. Just to get it to Just hook. To, uh, you can always use something that doesn't hook. You needed something that was going to hook. My thought, I always want something, usually I want something in my bag that's going to, that I don't need to go to, that's going to hook enough. Yep. I didn't have that. I needed something in that bag that was going to hook more. Yep. I didn't think I, I stand at a couple last night or, or up to 500 grid, cleaned them all, thinking that's what, it, yeah. It worked to start with, but then it didn't. Yep. But uh, saying that, um, being that nobody really played the pattern I thought where they should have been playing, at the end I moved into like 13, 14, 15. Their boss had tried to throw the ball like straight up the boards, and I actually finished okay. Snuck out a senior casher. That's what it, you know. When you're my age, you get a, get a little extra bonus there to, to to beat some guys that are your same age. You cash. That's all that matters. Yeah. So, but why didn't I? I got to that point in three games ago. I didn't want to play there in a game two, three, or four. I don't know why. I never tried that. So I, well, I guess I guess I went through about eight different things. So. <laughs> So I guess I, I, I probably tried something. every ball in yeah, my Yeah, well, that's what that I'm saying I did, work. too. I tried all kinds of different bowling balls, different things, whatever. So. All right, so the guys just finished uh, game three. That's why it's quiet here. But I'm going to give you the result after game two of match play. Like we just talked about, there's no carryover pins. So if you got out of the gates well and you won your matches, like Jordan Monins did with 225, 288, winning both. He's 173 over, and he's had a Keo Kian who had 234, 213. He's 107 over. And I don't know what Jordan had his third game, but he was pretty lined up those first two games. So I want to say that he had at least 220 because okay. he started spare, triple, spare, and then another double. Well, then he's going so to be uh, cakewalking to the ladder, depending on... I uh, think so. But still, we got three more games to go. Anyway, William Jones, we've watched a couple games down here using that really sanded urethane or whatever he's using. I think he, he started with the purple hammer. He tried a couple shots, yeah, and, and then, I think he is in a phase two. I think that's okay, what it no, is. Okay, no, I thought it was. I, I thought he had something a little bit more. Uh, it's a little bit more of a darker one because I saw yeah, a little bit of red. Yeah. So I think it is a phase two. Okay, maybe it is. Dave Ullman, 224, 220. He only won one of the matches. He's 74. By the way, William Jones, 89 over. Dave Ullman, 74 over. And Cody Larson, 240, 190. Only won one of the matches. He's 74 over. Then, Phil Stillmacher, Jason Craig, and Brady Stearns. Well, both of those, all three of those guys have won both matches, just 202 or one, well, in Brady's case, 162 1. Zach Mitchell, Justice Shield, 
180, 190, winning both wow. of her matches. So one pretty good woman bowler right there. She's really good. Brent Newman, we just watched, had 190, 190. Uh, won the second game. I think he just won the third game there. Uh, Matt Flone. Yes. We talked about Matt Flone. Uh -huh. Chad Nelson, 190, 146, and he won. I saw that match, and uh, Jim Spigner had to just mark him the 10th, and, and he didn't do crossed it? over okay. for a 5-10. And, and, and he didn't awesome. pick it up, as you're trying to say. Pick it okay. Up. So, it so anyway, just tells you how hard it is. I was, I was trying to look and see who he bowled against, but there were uh, one, two, three, four people that were under that score. So he could have bowled any one of those one of those four. You said he bowled Jim Spikner? Uh Yes. He had the one thirty-two. Yes. Yep. Okay. One thirty-two to one forty-six. Yep. Wow, that's uh, and a win. And a win. That's, that's like crazy. shooting one seventy-six and yep. losing. What's better? I'd feel better with the 176 <laughs> and yes. losing. Yes. But then again, maybe because it's the same thing. The same thing. I know, but at least you bowled better. But yourself, you feel better. Or less. Anyway, I'm not going to read all the scores, but it's down to 142 under is 24th, and 173 over is first. So after two games. I was just going to say that, but I was uh, contemplating to give the exact score or just say. He's out of it. <laughs> what was the exact score? 315. I didn't contemplate the exact score. I just thought I'd say it. I was contemplating. <laughs> That's a good word, isn't it? It's it like is. he's done this for a <laughs> couple years. No, I believe me, I still have trouble figuring out who's going to win in the 10th lots of times. Uh, we do that all Kirk the time. Kirkhoven math sinks in sometimes, <laughs> no matter Speaking what. Speaking of Kirkhoven. Yeah. Are you out there again lately? Uh, no, we're, oh. we're, we'll be going out there soon. The lockers finally shipped. Nice. 28 new lockers for Kirk Oven, Kirk Oven High School. KMS. Oh, yeah, K, KMS School. Kirk where Jason Oven, grew up. Sunberg. What are you talking about? Everybody knows oh, where Come on, is. you don't know where Jason went to school? I'm only 26. I don't know where these places 26. are. 26. That's like I'm almost three times your age. Not quite, but it seems like it. <laughs> By the way, Jason, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. the... the that this guy sitting next to us here, Will guy, cool. never beat me in a match. I've know. heard it. Yeah. I've heard that. So we got in the same pair today. It wasn't a match, but just so you know, did I had lose? a higher score than him on that game. Just, I just wanted to point that what out. What did you shoot that game? I don't even know. 184. Oh, yeah. I, don't know where the standings <laughs> are, I had two games over that today. So. I was going to say, I don't know where the standings are, but Will didn't, well, he didn't have a good Will day. No. So, um, so Robbie Spikner wanted to know if he could post a picture of the qualifying scores. Please do. Um, how can we do that? Oh, if we could. Oh, if we could. Oh, it's on its way. Sorry, Robbie. It'll be on okay. Facebook within a minute. My daughter. My daughter's doing it right now. Yep. Is that the the match play or the qualifying? Qualifying. The qualifying, qualifying. and okay. the match play through two both. Okay, perfect. Actually, no wait. We're gonna do match play after three. So qualifying will be up shortly. Match play after three. I think up. he just wants to see his brother that his brother made the cut. Yeah, and your brother did. Yeah, yeah. he was the number. Yes, Jim, Jim Spiker. Jim was one hundred and one yep. under. Yep. I made him sweat, Robbie. If you're listening still, I made him sweat. Uh, well, you know all the analogies. I want to go through them, uh, but he was nervous, even though I knew the whole time announcing, you know, that he had made it, <laughs> and uh, he actually mentioned he goes that was the most grueling cut score announcement I've lived through. <laughs> <laughs> well, I watched him, I bowled next to him in the last game. And he had a turkey and he kind of slapped it off and he got excited about it. And I'm thinking, you're only in the fifth frame. You're right, early. And then yeah. he opened the next frame and I'm thinking to myself, oh, you gotta calm Reel down. Reel those that. emotions in. Exactly, yeah, whatever. yeah. And he made it anyway, but I've just, uh, I tried to be so patient and calm today because he couldn't get excited because the next one is going to be out the window or if you goose it a little bit or whatever you did. So. What is Tra Tracy? What are you just telling me? Sunberg. Kirk Olin Murdoch Oh, Sunberg. okay. I didn't catch that. <laughs> All right, Tracy. Would you just oh. stop in at the school and see if oh, their lockers are installed yet, there, will you? Kish almost picked up the Greek church right there. Oh, really? That was really close. Ron Kish. 
There was another person that almost picked up the Greek church. That was pretty close on the of the higher end. They left the same thing, the Forpin. I pick it up once in my life. Ron, Ron's not having a. No, that's why I just. Uh, a, a I was just looking at that. But the only thing I was going to say about Ron, you know, when you bowl like 250 of these in a row. Which he's is, a great bowler. Which is something, yeah. He's a great bowler with the equipment that he has. <laughs> about 20 years old. It's amazing. I, I agree. He uses some. Now, I know he can afford some new stuff because he drives for Pepsi and I'm oh, sure yeah. he does okay, whatever. But um, he probably just likes the bowling balls that he has. There's nothing wrong with that. No. So right now on the, on the screen we have... Keo probably likes new bowling balls too, but there's nothing wrong with the 1982 <laughs> blue hammer that he has. It also has been plugged, and we've been making a joke about this the whole day, and I've never stopped giving him, uh, giving him a crap about it, but he, he's had that blue hammer for, oh, Lord, like more than... 10 years or so, and it has been plugged about four times, plus uh, than that. It's, it's, uh, There's a lot of plugging going on. You in think that I would have kept mine? I had four of them at one time. I was telling Jason this earlier. Yeah. Way back in the 80s, I had I had four blue hammers, two were dull, two were shiny. I had a dull one, a two dull one drilled straight up and one drilled axis weight, and a shiny one straight up and axis weight. Perfect. Those are the four bowling balls with the Don Johnson totes that I would carry <laughs> in the bowling. And then after they, you know, they kind of wore out, I had four wine U dots, and then I probably had four black hammers at one point too doing that. Then I had the gold hammer and the and the gray hammer. Or no, these are angles. Take the back. It was a gold angle and a. I think I was getting ahead of myself. Then I went to the black angle, which I thought was a really good ball. And then the blue angle, which is one of the really good. I didn't care for the gray or the gold angle, but the black and the blue were really good. That was back in the late 80s, 89-ish, I think, with that blue angle. Those were good balls. For that time period, yes. But they would last us like two years, you know. Oh, yeah. They didn't last like six months, and, and then you buy new stuff, or, or you guys get new stuff, or however that works. Every couple months now, it yeah. seems like. I know, that's a lot. We were talking about that. We were bringing up the subject of any tournament, not just here, USBC Open, all or whatever. When new balls come out and they're not out to the general public, should they be able to be used in a tournament when nobody else can actually have that ball and use it? Well, what's interesting is that, like with Storm, they send their balls out through the VIP program, through Pro Shops, almost like a month or a couple weeks early, so like three weeks early. So we can sell them. We can sell them to public. I don't you, think there really is a clause saying that we can't. Well, I thought there was something that he wouldn't. They're not available until the release date is this day on certain bowling balls. Or well, it's whatever. really that we can't order them. So if we get one through our VIP program, oh, you can sell that one. We can sell that one, but we can't order okay. the other oh, ones it. until they come in. So, so if they're USB-C approved, you can use them. But not everybody can get them. Not everyone can get it. So is that fair for people to be able to use a bowling ball that's not out for anybody else to buy yet? But Paul, if you think about this, it's like there's that one new ball that's coming out, but then you have 30 plus balls behind that if you're in one or one brand. You know, if you're under Storm Products, you have three brands. You know, right. one ball I don't think is really going to be the end-all, be-all. Um, but if somebody bowls a tournament with this ball and this is good, but I can't get that ball, is that fair? That's what we're, we're discussing that. Is, so. is that fair? Uh, when, when it's not out for the general public to go buy, bowling in a tournament, should that be allowed for, some, for somebody to use it when the general public can't buy it? That's it's a, what it, it's a good that's, topic. We're, we're discussing that. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that, uh, and, and plus, a lot of the bowling balls that come out, they're not all, okay, that's getting, uh, Three off the left, three off the right there for Ron Kidd. Well, actually, he went four, too, but uh, he missed a four in the middle. He missed the one, two, five, eight. The top bucket. <laughs> yes. I don't think I've ever seen the top bucket. <laughs> I just happen to be left looking up and seeing that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, that'll get you 72 in the sixth. And John Holmes is going, well, I should win this match, whatever. But anyway, get back on this. I'm not sure if that's the right thing or not. And all the bowling balls that come out, aren't 
it's going to be good for me or you or anybody else, as good as some other ones that have been out for even a year. And I think that's where my point is, is that is that ball going to be the absolute best ball to use for yourself? Because it could look good, but then you almost don't know what it's going to do for yourself. Because you can see the pros and all the, the staff right. members, the regional staff members throw it, but it might not be good for your game. Oh, correct, yeah. So, um. But if it's normal, like, benchmark ball, like an idol, you know, everybody loves the idols. I don't have any, I never did. Um, a lot of people, I should say. Yeah, or a phase yeah. two. Well, like, let's phase, see, I was going to say the phase, phase two. Four. Like, the, when the phase okay, four yeah. came out, everyone wanted that ball. Because of the phase three was so good. It's just or the Or phase two was ball. so good, I mean. Yep. Um, I still have phase two that I use today. That is a ball that withstood the test of time, like the Jackal Ghost. Um, Correct. Still selling that new, and that's what, three, four years old? Or whatever it is? Uh, Maybe. It's just, okay. It's on its fourth so it, fifth year. And it's still a very good ball that it people is. are still buying today. Um, so not every ball, new ball coming out is good, but... Um, and that's that, I think that's where my argument is. Is that, like I said, is that ball going well, to be I heard the a lot absolute this, best? Yeah. I heard a lot this year, uh, especially when some bowling balls were out, and then they were determined to be illegal but yet people use them in a tournament that I couldn't go use that same ball with I right. couldn't use that same ball at that same tournament not, I'm not as good as these guys it's just a principle thing to me somebody's using a bowling ball bowled really well at a national tournament a month later or whatever USBC takes away and says it's deemed to be illegal so even if I had one I couldn't use that and I might have done well with it. I don't know or not, whatever. But I couldn't bring it. Yep. So that was, uh, I thought they should have allowed them to be used for the rest of that tournament. Yeah. Maybe not use it in another one at the first term or your next league or something. I agree. But was somebody used it in that. So this is where, and then people get that, this particular person, I'm not sure if got that ball before anybody else got that ball too. Anyway, we're enough on that subject. Let's look at the scoring pace. So yes. I see that let's do that. Yeah, let's of, do that. More of the, the lower side, I think I think hooks a little bit more. Uh, I, I believe it okay. The side that we're on. What I saw, uh, and of course it was later in the day, it finished better. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So okay. therefore I felt I had more room on the low end of the house. Didn't have that on the high end. But then again, it wasn't playing the same part of the lane. It was earlier in the day. I didn't know what ball to use or wherever. So um, you bowl here a fair amount. What uh, would you normally see? Usually usually what I see is that the, the lower end, like this side that we're on, uh, usually is a little bit tighter. Uh, okay. nine, 9 and 10 is the best pair in the house. Um, and that's in the middle of the house because that, that where a lot of people put their open bowlers and it... Uh, Maybe, you know. Most of the time, but there's also a doorway that's right on oh, okay. one and two. All right, yeah, and there then, you go. And um, then there's the front door that's right outside of 11 through 14. So okay. a lot of that moisture. It, it, right, and the, and the airflow. Air yeah, okay. The, makes it a little bit tighter. 13 and 14 kind of transitions into being one of the better pairs. A little, little bit more hooking a tiny bit sooner. Okay. A uh, little bit more free hook on the higher end. I think that personally I've had better scores on the higher end than the lower end. But 9 and 10 would probably be the best. Pick. Okay. I nine. started on 9 and 10 at 190, so yeah, it was good. On, on the fresh? That's really good. <laughs> yeah. I, that's more like a 240 anywhere else. Well, I should have had that. I have a 210s and a 9. And actually, I the, think that's where Mon has had his he did. 280. He did. The yeah. 9 and 10. We were, we were watching that, whatever. So. And uh, hey, Brian Flown, I'm going to leave it up to Will Matafee and Jason Hansen to keep talking after I leave. But I am going to have one more Summit Pale Ale, and then I'm going home. I thought you were going to have a Minnesota Twins Pilsner. I don't like that. I've, I've tried a Pilsner. I'm not a Pilsner guy. Did you know, a little, little, little side topic, did you know that this was has been in the Summit line for a long time? Okay. They were going to discontinue it, then they slapped the Minnesota Twins logo on it, and then it's the number one They should have discontinued it. And let me tell you another story why. <laughs> so I, I go to a lot of Twins games. I'm a season ticket holder, and I'm in a section where to get free beer. 
tap beer. Yep. The four tap beers they have uh, that are free at the Twins game. Well, first of all, the three are Mick Golden Light, Bud Light, and Budweiser. So three years ago, they had uh, Goose Island IPA as the fourth one. That was good. I like that. Last two years, they had Kona Big Wave. So that was good. I like Kona. Along with the Mick Golden Light, Bud Light, and Budweiser. You know what they did this year? Mick Golden Light, Bud Light, Budweiser, and Summit Pilsner. Yep. I don't like any one of those beers. What? But those are the free ones. They're free. The server how knows. How bad is beer when it's free? Let me tell you how bad it is. <laughs> it can be. It can be. After a while, you get tired of beer. I don't care if it's free if it's not good. Well, then it's not free, Johnny. I got to go to the Captain Diets, and they're not free. That's the problem. Those are double expensive. See, then that's it, where you go. Yeah. Anyway, so I told the server that he agreed with me. He said they had their meeting last year, whatever. What kind of beers to have? Because they're all like the same. Uh, ready? Or not? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, I'm actually gonna run out. Oh, you gotta move. So, Cragen right now is 65 over, and he has 250 left, depending on what this shot does, 240 left. He can win this match. It looks like he's going to beat Keo unless something happens with Keo. Keo right now is 107 over, and if he punches out, he can get 217. So that could get him to 124 over. And Cragen with the win with 247 as max and 30 bonus pins could get him to 77 just on this game. It could get him over Keo. So Cragen can make a big move right now if he finishes out. Looks like Keo is going to finish first and then Cragen will finish second. What'd you have, Jordan? Yeah. You win? You lose it. Perfect. Uh, what'd you lose to? What was it? What was the score? Big game two? No, Jordan big, was oh game one. Game two. You had a Jordan big game. just you had game four just got off a of one ninety eight yeah. and he that lost. One? Two. So yeah. he two. will get to one one seventy one over. That doesn't really help Cragen too much. Um, he can still win the match. But he has to he has to double to force Keo to I'll get the rest for 217. Looks like Craig in his match. If he doesn't get it, um, would be 223. William Jones. Let's check on him. He has first four, nine spare, gutter nine in the next three. So he can get to 248 against Newman's 226. I think that's gutter number three in match play. Total? No, for him. Oh. He had two, uh, I believe he had two in the match in front of us when he was here. He won that match. I mean, he did? It just, yeah, it just means he's, I mean, he's playing him and he's aggressive. And, yeah. He's using a phase two, isn't he? Uh, he wasn't when he was here, but he could be now. Oh, no, I think he switched to a purple hammer. He was, like, in between a purple hammer and a phase two. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was Seems like he was on a one and two. Oh, he was on Cody Larson could have had 230 until he split this one shot and get to 196. Yep, sorry, buddy. Like was that what it is? Uh, no. Uh, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Craig has said it's an older ball, probably from the 90s. This looks like a piranha. Probably a piranha or some something like that. Piranha? I got a piranha in my garage. It's for Sam Lanto. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have said that, Sam. Oh, it's a. It is. What? It really didn't look like that. 
Yeah. What is it? It's a red black widow? It looks like it has a lot of red on it. Well, why is it called a red widow? Oh, okay, sorry. More white. It looks more like a pink black well, widow. I can't be. Even though it's not. Well, why is it a pink widow? Why is it called... I don't know. It's, it's a black widow, but it happens to be pink or red? There's a difference? You're trying they call, to call it a black widow pink. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, Joe all Easton right. will take all your free beers at the Twins games <laughs> if, you, if you don't want them. Yeah. Well, first of all... They're not free. Ooh. They come with the price of the ticket. Right. Yeah. And that's a lot of money. Yeah. So I'd rather have better beer for the amount of money I spend. <laughs> and the server agreed with me that he had. they had a meeting that they were talking about what they should have for the customers who come down there want to drink something besides light beer. And season ticket holders don't yes. have say in that? Well, I just started talking about okay. it. And the server agrees, and they're going to discuss that stuff, that they have to have a range of beers for everybody, not just all the same kind of tasting beer. Lights. I agree. Not just the domestic lights, like everybody knows. Correct. So, Keo. I like to use the word complimentary. It's not it's free. Right. Okay, well. We don't use the F paid, word. You paid for it. Yes, right. But they give you something back. That's complimentary. That's complimentary, yeah. When Jason used to run the shop here, he always hated the F word, yeah, and that was the, the free here. word. Yeah. Hey, come in, what do I get for free? I just say, don't use the F word in here. You know what my dad told me in his infinite wisdom years and years ago? Nothing's free. Yep. There's a lot of complimentary items in the world. Yeah. You pay a little oh. bit of money, we'll give you <laughs> You're getting a compliment, yes, exactly. Compliments of your I, donation. I do have to say, the, the tickets that I have and the seats to sit in and the valet parking, they treat us That's like kings there. Twins do a very good job, and they're season ticket holders, how they treat us very, very well. So I just walked up and down to check scores and see what's going on. I walked, we're obviously down here in the low end of the house, and almost every pair, every game, people were between 150 and 190, kind of max. People are still in it or out of it, but uh, or not really out of it. Their matches are close, but nobody was running away with anything. There was no 230 games. Hardly any won 40 or 50 games. Every match was close, but no high scores. It's tough out there. Yeah, exactly. You know, when you re-oil, it's always going to be tighter. Usually that's Last the case. month was And I, I felt like it was a lot tighter when, it, when we hit match plays. Last month? Yes. 13th okay. to 3rd is 88 pins with 30 bonus a game available. Okay, so that was, that's kind of what I was getting yeah. at. That I walked up, Everybody had kind of the same scores. Ten spots. And that's after two games. Yep, our 80 pins difference with 30 bonus available each game. So that's very tough. With three games left, yes. Yeah. And Keo just won that match by getting seven in the fill ball. Okay. Forced Cragen to double, and he and left an eight pin. He left a okay. light, or he left a heavy eight pin, almost was a six eight. So Many strikes when it didn't matter. It's funny how that happens. That's how it happens. always happens. And, and I, I say this all the time, uh, and I heard, uh, I've always talked about it with Mike Wurz way back. We'd be bowling, he says, I'm going to bet you a quarter. I guarantee you there's more pressure than just because there's a bet. There's yeah, something. Yep. Something on. I don't care if it's quarter, 100 bucks. might as well be the same because you just try that much harder. And Jason Belmonte said this uh, one time. He said, uh, uh, in a match, and if you finish first or if you're, uh, you know, guy makes you finish last, you go up in 10th frame, he goes, I don't care what. You throw it differently if you need something yep. or whatever, no matter what. And this is the best bowl in the world saying that. The adrenaline, the thought process, or whatever. Now, some people handle it better and and still feel pretty good, but differently. So William Jones is going to shoot at least two thirty-six. That's a big score. Had, that's huge. And he right was. Now. This is game four. He now. We don't have third. The, He's going to jump Keo. Keo got the two. Well, is that, that's after two. This is game four, so we don't oh, know. Oh, game four. Okay. Yeah, we'll collect after this one. We'll be updated. By the way, wine is free also at the Twins Champions Club area. Is Verna a huge wine fan? Wine is free. Oh, wine, well, wining is free too because you can wine as much as you want. And, all you want. Uh, and uh, people let you do that too. 
as far as against the team. Well, for sure. <laughs> yeah. But what I don't like about whining against the team, just so you know, is people say a lot of stuff. They're they don't really they're not educated enough on the, what's going on in the team, and they say stuff that that's not true because they it looks this way. So I always have to try to explain things. Like somebody come up here today. Well, if Rock or whatever let the Twins go guy pitch in the sixth or seventh inning, and I go, let me tell you why he doesn't. Because the Twins pitchers, when they get to the third time through the order, are bad for the the, the opposing team. It hits like has an 850 OPS against yeah, them. We've seen you. <laughs> you see me write stuff like that, right? No, I mean oh, like okay. we've seen the picture. I oh yeah, okay. Do. I've seen you. Yeah, oh yeah, right. I thought you were saying you were seeing me <laughs> write it because <laughs> I have written over that. So, so he's and that's a lot of times that'll happen in the fourth or the fifth inning, and it looks like and the guy's already got 78, 70 or eighty pitches. Now, the nat the the average for the all thirty teams in both leagues is five point one five point one innings pitch per starter. The Twins are at four point eight. So they're right in the middle. They're right at that average. But it looks like, you know, oh, he pulls them early all the time. If you really dig into the stats and you see that, you know it's not that true. So anyways, that's why I had to get my twins thing in there. Whatever. And they lost again today, so I, I can bitch about it because I pay a lot of money to bitch about it. I can whine about it. That's season tickets. Season ticket holders. So we're on game five, and Brady is finally on this side. He's been on the... Oh. <laughs> he's, he's on the high side. It looks like he says he's having fun. As I was uh, walking. No, I, I just walked out. I was just saying, I walked up there. I didn't see anything. That 190 would have been max. And as I was walking by, somebody was mumbling to themselves. And it was Brady. <laughs> and, uh, I didn't want to say that, whatever. But, I mean, everybody's mumbling to themselves when you get like this. And that's exactly how it was in qualifying. Yeah, oh, yeah. You said there was more people out there bowling. So... Yeah, everybody was. Uh, I tried to mumble to myself so nobody hears me. I try to like you know not show that emotion where I'm upset. It doesn't do any good. All right, who else is watching here? Ben Gody. I had a match against Ben Gody last month. Remember that Ben? If you're still watching, I beat him like 160 to 140. He goes, well, way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't say anything. Congratulations. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You won the match. Uh, yeah. And then I lost uh, somebody else, like 140 to 150. Oh, we get to watch Matt Flown Bowl here on uh, lane three and four, the better half of the Flown father son combo. Yeah. The better looking half. He's got all that good hair. Brian Flown doesn't He's have. He's got great hair. I don't know where the hell Brian would be. Hey, that was your dad who just came by. I didn't see him drop a beer off or anything. What the hell? I know. Well, I got to leave anyway. So. Well, this is your one beer, right? Yeah. I'm leaving then after leave. this. Yeah. That's my fill. <laughs> That's my fill. Yeah. That's my fix. I don't know how often Brian, uh, Matt Flown has actually made the cut. I don't see him. I don't see him bowl much. He's bowled a couple yeah. within the last couple of ben, years. Ben, that was his high game. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so uh, Carl, you're going down to Dubuque, and you got to be ball rep. All right, well, good for you. I'm glad you're going to do something. Are you sure he's not going to hit the casino while well, they're bowling? I'm, are you sure you're asking me? Or are you asking uh, It's more asking Carl, him. Yeah, you're asking him. Yeah, oh, he'll be hitting that. It's a question and a statement. <laughs> yes, exactly. Is he actually going to ball rep or casino? He's going to casino. So now we have Manas on lane three and four. Start out double and then two seven. So he's our leader right now, as as I know. You know it for sure? Probably. I mean, it's after two, but he had a 70 pin lead after two. Wouldn't suspect that he... I'll stick around until they get their reports after four, and then I'll let you guys take it from there. Okay, you, you, you know, missed them all. So, um, I'm not sure what he tried to do there, but according to Nelson Burton Jr., years and years ago, he used to do the tip of the week on ABC TV Pro Bowlers Tour. Oh, yeah. You know, in right handed, obviously, he was talking about you did, you left a 310. The best way to pick it up was to throw your strike shot at it if you were lined up. 
Okay. <laughs> so honestly, what he said. This was, you didn't. I use, wouldn't do that. But well, okay. You didn't have spare balls back then. You know, you didn't really throw it straight. I mean, yeah. so that's what he said. And I wonder if Jordan was doing that. I don't think so, but I. Just, so he just said the best way to pick up a three ten or a two four. Um, as Nelton Burton Jr. Jr. would say, is if you had a good line as a strike shot, that's what you do to shoot for 310. The three pin hit the, He did his on the ABC Pro Bowlers Tour, yeah. tip of the week. Yeah. Well, we just watched Jordan Monins leave a 2-7, and he tried to throw a strike shot at it, and he would have went, he went high, so he missed the two pin, so he missed the spare. Was that a, I'm not sure if he tried to do it that way or just missed, or um, I don't know. We've had this conversation a lot of times. Uh, I'm a firm believer in plastic or spare balls in general. Yes. Uh, I throw my plastic ball at a 310 like I'm picking up a six pin. Well, so do I. And I make a lot of them. Uh, percentage is good. So yeah, I mean, I I, I understand Nelson Burton's thing, but I, I, you know, a lot of those ABC 1970s. Right? I mean, they were, they were yeah. teaching you the 369 system, basically. Uh, yes. I mean, yes. He, he's given the, the, yeah. older, the people the most generic info. Yes, correct, he right? was. And, and they I, didn't use spare balls back then. Right, right. Okay. And the better bowlers, anyways, develop all of their own spare yeah. systems. Yes, right, yeah. They yes. don't adhere to the norm. They, they have their own bits. Well, you, if, no, if you, watch the, you watch the guy in the tour right now, they just throw the ball 100 miles an hour straight at a pin, no matter what. But... I always wonder what they, what their thought, like Pete Weber, who's a very, very good spare shooter, doesn't look like he puts his feet down, look where he's throwing, and what was that noise? I thought the... Uh, I think he flagged I, a 10 and hit, hit Ah, the okay. Yeah. Usually, yeah, you can hear when a ball hit, misses it's the pin. like William Jones. Yeah. I think it was over but, 9-10. Like, so Pete Weber, I mean, he just gets the ball, he, he doesn't, he, it, does he even look down where he's standing, but he just throws the ball straight and hard at everything, and he picks it up 99% of the time. Yep. It's hard to tell with his sunglasses. Or he's Good point, but you can see if he's looking down. But Walter Ray, on the other hand, counts those boards and whatever, and he's the best spare shooter there ever has been, next to Mark Roth. Yeah. yeah, and he just throws that end over end and lets that ball hit the thumb hole, whatever, but yeah. Okay, so uh, Brian and Matt Flown had a Freddie Mercury stash years ago that supposedly looked better than him with his hair. And why the hell are we talking about Matt Flown and his hair and his Freddie Mercury stash when we should be talking about bowling? Here we get on camera. What's left? The head pin. <laughs> right? I mean, we talked about it earlier. We watched yeah. Steli there. Uh, yeah. Still yeah. Yeah. Still left on the first one. He stood right on the second one. Uh, we, uh, I, I did see a head pin leave off the first shot and miss. Okay. In match play. Well, if you didn't hit in the first, how are you, you going to hit in the second time? You don't know where it went. You, you try talking, to move, you try <laughs> to do something different, and, it, and you're wrong. it's the same thing. We uh, we just talked to, before you were, a little while ago when you were gone, Jason, somebody, will go on name, Ron Kish, I think it was, uh, <laughs> left the middle, the top bucket, you called it? <laughs> he left oh, yeah. the one, one two, two, five, eight. Five. Or, or, or the one. Yep. After two shots. Oh, yeah. Let me think. Yeah, one, two, three, one, five. Two, three, five. Yeah, it's right. like you're practicing sevens yeah. and tens. Yeah. How oh, could you? Very nice. Uh, <laughs> he probably could shoot at it again and still not hit it all the time. Do you have updates after this? Uh, coming soon. I believe they're in printing. Let's go. Our crack staff is going to have our update here pretty soon. But Brady Stearns mentioned, he just came down here like you had mentioned. You see him bowl right there on lane six, throwing that urethane ball by five and striking. And the last five pairs, I don't, there was not a 200. I was saying everything was like 160 to 190 max. It was almost like everybody had the same scores. So, you know, you were saying, uh, Kim, are you saying there's a little higher scoring down there, you think, normally? You, when there's the house shot on, usually okay. that, that has a little bit more free hook. But today it seemed like it has more, um, a little bit tighter. Well, okay, let me, without really thinking about that, I started on 9 and 10. I had a good, pretty good shot. I thought the oil carried down or I didn't know where to play. And I went right from there and I bowled terribly. 
they come down to 3, 4, 7, 8, 11, 12, and I bowled okay the last three games. So evidently, either I figured something out, do the ball better, combination of both, uh, knowing kind of, I, I just got myself in one part of the lane I was trying to throw the ball straight down the boards and just try to hit the head pin. It worked for me, whether it was the end of the house or whether it was just I finally got somewhat comfortable. Yep. And my goal was to get a senior casher out of the thing. So I tried harder. Why didn't I try that hard game one? Well, if you try too hard sometimes, then it goes the opposite that. way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying. I had a goal when I was. It's always good to have as, goals. As you get older, you have different goals, and I didn't want to be the worst senior, and I wanted to sneak out a senior cash. So I did that, being that I couldn't make you the cut. You got your goal? But then again, I look back now, as bad as I bowl, I only missed the cut by 80 pence. That's not bad at all. As bad as bowling four <laughs> games, I think those four games I had 600. Wait a minute, I didn't even have that much. <laughs> 139, 148, 157, 157. Those are my four worst games. I'm good, Jack. Thank you. So, I see a trend right now of CBA patterns this year. It seems like there's a lot more medium to short patterns. Like last year, it was more long patterns. Okay. Do you think um, there is a trend kind of from year to year? Or is it more just, let's just um, try to put something little bit more challenging out I don't know that answer and I actually haven't paid that much attention honestly what I've been thinking the last few is they're getting too tough for me no honestly and so <laughs> they are I tough I don't know how much longer I can actually compete and do this um, not making the cut or whatever but when you get 80 90 bowlers then I would bowl all the time kind of doesn't matter I'm gonna to try to get a check some way one way or another I got two ways of getting a check you got one nope. way you know nope. um, so I don't I haven't really thought much about it but they I was talking about it earlier I'm not sure if you were here when Sam was on there with us but they've all gotten to be where you got to like loft the left gutter fourth fifth there at the end today yep. you did not have to you couldn't so but they all seem to get into there and longer patterns get into there yep Okay, so this is not a longer pattern. We didn't get so they were all longer. Yep. Now that I started to think about that more. I don't know if he, what Jason does. Does he see a pattern? Does he have a pattern? He tries at his, his bowling center and, hey, this would be a good one for the next yep. tournament. I, I'm not sure what he does. I, I don't want to get involved in that because I am involved in the CBA, so I don't want anybody to think that I'm helping out with a pattern. Sure. So I don't ever bring that up to him. But they all seem to get in where you're... You're in. You have to be in deep, and you need the people who uh, the people who can actually either more revs or slow hook it or whatever do better. And I I always love different sort of patterns because it seems like the last couple of years there haven't been like this sort of pattern where it was like mediums or or short patterns. There've been more long patterns. So I think that it's good to have a transition um, to where that it's. A little bit tougher with the short well they were tough they were well, tough I did not expect them to be this when I saw the pattern I thought well they'll be playable people who can play outside and get the ball to roll up and finish in the pocket or they'd be just fine it didn't it didn't turn out that way you're talking about Jordan Monin's leading well guess what Jordan he still Monin's is leading I'm going to give you this rundown, although he did lose his last game shooting 198. So Jordan Monin winning three matches is plus 248 over now. Keo Kean winning all four of his matches is still, he's 190 over, so he's still 58 pins behind him, even though he's won all four of his matches. Yep. William Jones, we talked, we just had 230, won three of his four matches, 146 over. Cody Larson. Kind of underrated kind of a guy. But, uh, he, he's always up there, very unassuming. Always up there. I know he's 130 over. And then Phil Stillmaker, who's won three matches. But he's under, scratch-wise, he's 78 over. That's a difference between fifth and fourth. Yes. I mean, that is Well, it's 50, 52 pins difference. And those 52 are, are actual scores or whatever. Then Josh Kennedy... 
plus 67, he's won three and a half matches. Jason Cragen, plus 59. Zach Mitchell, 55. Brent Newman, who I thought should be killing this because he looked yeah. like he was doing pretty good, but he's only won two matches and uh, 43 over. Justice Shield, still hanging in there. Won three matches. Look at it, 180, 190, 180, 178. She's just hanging right in there. Tenth place, Brady Stearns. He said they were, and he's about ready to rip his shirt off. You just saw that right there. He, talking to himself. That's the pro move. Yeah. Before you rip your shirt off, you put it up here, and then nobody can read your lips. I well, just faced the machine, and nobody read your. Lips. You can do that too, but okay. this is the cool kids. Okay. All right. That's a, okay. I, I learned. See, learned something new up here in the booth. You know. <laughs> Anyway, then it's got Brady Stern, Matt Flone, Ben Witt, Dave Ullman. I'm not going to read everybody's name down there, whatever. Except Chad Nelson being 16th. Has he ever been 16th? Haven't seen that in a while. Exactly. Won a match with 146. Lost a match with 160. And then all the way down to uh, somebody who's 265 under. That means he's 500 and... 13 pins out of first Woo. in four games. Woo. Can that happen? I well, haven't it just seen it before. How can one guy after four games be 513 pins out of the lead? But he is. I, I feel his pain. <laughs> okay. I feel his pain. Uh, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a rough Okay. Match play, but he's gonna cash. He's going to he's, cash. He has money coming back to him. He's gonna yeah. get points. So did I. And I didn't have to bowl on this. <laughs> no, that's what I didn't want to. It's always a big joke we always talk about. We want to be 25th. Yeah, right. We want to be 25th. I want the most money without having to <laughs> Exactly, back. right, yeah. So, Jason, we were talking about this a little bit, about CBA patterns last year versus this year. It seems like there's been a lot of medium and short patterns. Last year was more long. Um, is there kind of a trend that you want to do each year to year, or is it just... We no. want to do different patterns every single I talked about month. it earlier uh, to somebody, and it might have even actually been on, on camera. Or, uh, um, no, last year I chose a bunch of patterns based on the centers that we went to and characteristics of centers. And a lot of those patterns then lent themselves into being a certain length, volume, etc. And somebody, I don't want to say called me out on it, because it wasn't that, it was a good conversation. Somebody just said, hey, I noticed that you have a lot of patterns that are 43, 44, 45 feet. Sure. Then I started looking back and I, I said, yeah, man. Looks like I sure did this year, you know? I, I did have a lot of that. And he asked, I'm just curious, is there a reason for it? And I said, yeah. I look at the centers we're going to, I see a lot of friction, I want to find some length. I see a lot of friction, I want to find some volume, I see. Right, so yep. I, I did a lot of patterns based on where we were bowling. So this year I came into it going, okay, they made a great point, and I hadn't paid enough attention to it over time. So I'm going to look at it closer. So these first few were right in the 41, 42 foot kind of range. Then we dropped to this one at 37. Yep. Uh, I would bet there's a good chance that next month might be the opposite of this and we'll see another eight feet added to it, right? Yep. The trend is going to be different. Right. How's that? The trend, okay. the trend will be that instead I kind of said this year, instead of looking at the places I'm going, I am just going to throw out the variables of patterns, and the rollers will just deal with what's in front of them, yep. basically, right? Um, so my goal this year is a lot more variety, to see a lot more different things in front of the rollers as we go from place to place, and not really looking at it as a, uh, I'm going to do it because the center has this kind of a lane surface, or it hooks there, or because I did feel like last year, you know, as a player, 
Um, last year there were points where you know you use different balls and you're kind of in the same area and then we all get to the same point at the end of the turn. Yep. Yep. And this season, um, last you know last three that I've been to, um, with them being four, um, they've been all different. Yep. Everything has been different, yep. and that's you know as a player, that's like I said, it's, it's great. That, that. It's great to see something different every single month. Yeah. So what, what I've seen, what I have seen, and what talk a lot of talk was for quite a while, everything was you got to loft the left gutter at the end of the day, or you, and if you can't do that, you're not going to score. I haven't seen that yet this year. Yeah. We nope. haven't had to do that, which that because when you have to do that, that takes people. When you take some certain people out of play, then it's not good for they're not going to come back. This might have taken some people out of play just because they were tough and not knowing where to play, whatever. And it just kept changing depending on where you went, who was on your pair that you followed or whatever end of the house it was, whatever. So we wouldn't want this low scoring. The pattern was fine, but the low scoring thing probably takes some people out of coming back again. Right. How do you make this a little more playable um, without tweaking a pattern? If you put a pattern down, you gotta put the pattern down. You, wanna, you don't wanna modify it because then all of a sudden it's not a pattern. So- I don't want it ever. Modify it. We used to try that. Yeah, I, I, I remember. Like I remember one years and years ago when the, before we got involved in all these kind of patterns that were out there. What's that? Lakeville, Lakeville was one of them. Yes. The modified shark. Yes. The forty-five foot pattern with extra oil. So here's the funniest thing was we bowl the doubles on a short pattern in October. We go to Lakeville and bowl a long pattern there and people played the same part of the lane. You had to be like sixth arrow yes. in a fallback shot, yes. and one was short and one was long, but you played in the same part of the lane. So this one, we were learning patterns, and the houses were learning patterns, and, yes. we, and we were letting uh, the, the guy who was the lane man there, who was, that, was all, that was the Brunswick stuff or whatever, yes. right? So uh, I'm not gonna say his name, but he, he said, well, we can do this, and okay, well, you know. So instead of naming patterns back then, we try to let the house do what I thought they should do to because they knew their house or whatever I didn't know enough about it myself either then we got to the uh, kegel patterns middle of the road beaten path those kind of things where the beaten path was used in the state tournament for a freaking beat we beat the path enough is what I finally said to people yes exactly whatever so yeah everyone was it made sense because that's where not not this caliber, but most bowlers played the track, and that's where you could start. So, you people went to a tournament in a, like a city state tournament. They, they could play where they were comfortable. Tighter, but still they could un, exactly yeah. So that play. helped, and then I don't know. I'm not. I've never been in the meetings of the Minneapolis St. Paul or now the Twin Cities bowling organization to try to tell them what they should or shouldn't do in their city tournaments. But I don't know what they're doing on a handicap tournament what they should or shouldn't do. I just know that if they're really easy, um, we really don't win. If they're really tough, other people don't bowl. So if you want to get the most bowlers, and that's why we have scratch events of the tournaments. I mean, we're, we are in a tough spot here. And even some of the governing bodies, let's say, and I use multiple there because Bolero is definitely appearing to make some kind of a push with the PBA type experience league or something. Um, there's certifications that both sides of that coin, uh, USBC and PBA, kind of want to seem to do. I mean, this this is, I think we're coming to a point where, like, the PBA is making a push to challenge the USBC in some kind of governing of our sport and probably take over the sport side of it and let the USBC handle some recreation side of it. I'm not sure exactly where that all is going to play out. Um, no. But there's there's a disconnect between recreational league bowling, right. recreational bowling, league bowling, and competitive Term tournament Yeah, bowling. exactly. And we do need to figure out a way where we can work this to be the fairest for all when we all think we're going to go compete against each other well, in some kind of a fair format. I don't have that answer. No. I wish I did. I don't think really anybody does. Yeah. So. 
Absolutely. Before we had any of these patterns, this was years ago when we let the house, actually it was just a house shot. Years and years ago, this house had this, this house had that, this house had that. And you would go there on a Friday night and practice, and that's what the pattern, that's the shot you had for the, the next tournament. Everything was on a Saturday, uh, qualifying, and Sunday was match play and whatever. Two-day tournaments all the time. And so some people bowled, well, here's like, you know, Texas had this, Elsie's had that, the Mateys had this, and, you know, and, and uh, Baines had this shot, whatever. And that's where you went. And then it got to be too high scoring, whatever, so we started to come out with certain we tried to do something different and it was just a mess and people would complain all the time and it was just people were just bitching and then we started putting on some patterns that were tougher and the scores were down and people are still complaining and you go why would you want to do that and people would, i'm not going to bowl the cba why would i go to that when i can go over this tournament and average this and i can average high you know and now we got to the point where there is not a tournament bowled on a house shot anymore but yet that's what everybody did way back then and we yep. started out uh, so I took a lot of grief way back when I was running in tournaments that why are you making them so tough? Well, because we want the better bowlers to uh, be the shows the better bowlers. And then like the Masters tournaments, whoever wins, well, U.S. Open qualifying, whoever wins has to, you don't want to have it be 500 over on a U.S. Open. You go out wherever the national one is and you suck. We don't want that to happen. So it's gravitated toward these patterns and people just know what they are. And every junior tournament, every everything is like a junior goal. Wasn't that really tough this year? I always prefer it to be tougher than easier. Like, if you look at, like I'm part of, you know, I have a lot of, of friends on Facebook that are from different states, Illinois and Wisconsin and Ohio. A lot of Ohio tournaments, they put down, they have a lot of tournaments, but then, you know, so-and-so, I won today with shooting 270, 250, 240, and I won by 10. So I don't think With their that, hat on backwards and ripped jeans? Yep. Because I look at the people like that, like that, and I'm going, is that how you want your tournaments to be? I, I would really love to see those people bowl our events. Oh. I think that they would throw. I even said today, I really would love to see the PBA guys bowl on this. Because I don't think that they would score way, you know, well, they wouldn't well, have a more advantage than we would. Yeah, they're just good, though. They're, they're good. They, but it's also confusing, you know. When oh, okay. You, when you double and then at two four tens, you know, yeah. that gets to everybody. Yeah, well, that does whatever. But those guys are top they are, notch. So they are very good. Yeah, they're. Uh, we don't allow them to bowl for myriad of reasons, whatever. And one of them is uh, if they're from around here and they bowled here, we don't care to come back and they can bowl all the time. But if they mm -hmm. if they're on the PBA tour and they move back here and they're like a, we used to call them touring one pros, but they don't have that distinction yep. anymore. We don't. If you bowl more than 50% of the national terms, where you can't bowl these, unless you grew up here, bowled them, got better, and went out there and come back. That's what we want. We, yep. want, we don't want to like stop those yeah. people from coming back and bowl. But we didn't. We wouldn't. And it started out years ago when Eau Claire was always a big one. We didn't allow the people from Milwaukee to come over and bowl unless they bowled a previous CBA tournament sure. before Eau Claire, because that was always yep. you know 200 entries, and we weren't going to give you know give them a chance to make. A, then we started brackets, so there was more money to be made, whatever. So. All right. Oop, I lost a... US, USOC, not USBC, Sam, you're talking about. So, Sam, you're saying that the... You're saying USBC? Is he talking USBC? Is he talking yes. Olympic? Uh, I'm not sure what you're saying there, Sam. Say your say your opinion here again, Sam. Are you saying that uh, the USBC will not recognize the PBA as representative organization, or are you saying that, what is the USOC? I'm not sure on that. USOC, okay. So that's probably the Olympic Committee. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good to know, Sam. So, Brian, you're saying your son is pretty? Is that what you're saying? I'm just telling <laughs> you he's got good hair, and I'm not sure where he... I know he didn't get it from you. He had to get it from your wife. <laughs> and somebody talked about his Freddie Mercury stash that he had. We all know about Freddie Mercury. I'll agree with all. <laughs> all, all. 
I'll agree with all of the above. Yeah, okay. Okay, Sam, yes, I got what you're saying now. The U.S. Olympic Committee will not move governing body to the PBA, which I'm glad they won't. I hope they don't. Say that, whatever. So. No, we we're talking. We were talking about Matt Flone's nice hair. How did he get that nice hair? He's got a dad like Brian. Brian he must have got it from no his, well. He must have got it from his wife. Absolutely. And it, then somebody had to bring up that you should have seen him with his Freddie Mercury mustache years ago. I guess his, whatever. His porn stick. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think it's Matt's birthday. Too. Oh, by the way, it is, is Matt's it? birthday. That's really? what. The, well, yeah. I picked on yeah. him earlier today. Yeah. And he's well, bowling on his birthday well, yeah. and made mm -hmm. cut. Mm -hmm. Have you ever bowled on your birthday and made the cut? No, because my birthday is January 1st, and there's no tournaments oh. on that day. Red eye. Bowl a red eye you should tournament. bowl a red-eye tournament because you probably make the cut. Feels about <laughs> like this tournament. You were born on January 1st. That's pretty cool. You born on the first uh, of my beer behind you there? Yeah, but at 4.30, so it's not like close to 12 a.m. The time of the day has no bearing over the day of your birthday, Will. The day is. I mean, if you, unless you really want to celebrate it at 4:30 in the morning. So I guess my wife and I tried to plan our our upcoming uh, our upcoming. That's newest right. Yes. Edition. Congratulations. You are going to be a father here, December yes. something. December 21st is when our due date is. And Joey Her. Robillard and his wife. Yeah, 23rd, I noticed that. The 23rd. So we have to get our tournaments in before his wife have the baby so that we so him and i have talked about that so it's kind of hard because that's when a lot of tournaments are <laughs> well exactly but that's okay bowling can yeah. wait there's always oh, be hey, tournaments. Hey, yeah absolutely yeah there's uh having kids and just watching them grow up will is phenomenal but think about this i don't have to plan like big presents i can just lump them into one like birthday and no you can no 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 and I'm, I'm gonna Christmas. Tell you, no you can't no you can't because I've always had the same thing okay but I'm not saying uh, even though it's a week apart you 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 have to have your day well right yeah like, like the small gifts okay all right but then yes. you have the big gift yeah like okay the big big this is this is both because I would yes. yeah I agree with that but you still have to have the day right this yeah their day okay yep all right so you Just, like I well, always same, I always right. had like the smaller gifts when I got to my birthday but then like the big gifts from all the uncles and grandparents and you're lucky that you got big gifts see some people don't even get a gift well guitar hero was kind of the only <laughs> thing that that was the big gift like the, something electronic that. yeah i'm actually kidding on all that whatever but uh, my birthday was almost perfect it's june 27th oh. so and my sister's birthday is june 25th so she's like exactly six months before or after christmas so there's, <laughs> you know by the time Sorry, christmas comes around you get this, and then I haven't had anything for six months, and then you get stuff. Although, when I was growing up, we got Christmas time, we just got clothes for school. That was, uh, we couldn't wait to get all new clothes, whatever, that we could wear for school. That's what we, that's what we got. Is that, that, is that bad that I want that now? Like, it's okay for me to have that? To, to want clothes? Yeah. Or? Not a bad thing? I always say it's just different. Different era, different things. I don't need anything anymore. I can just uh, buy it. Well, that's what I... People have a hard time buying for me. And I tell my kids, don't buy me anything because I buy what I need and want. And and But if you buy something for you, know, they'll buy me like, you know, I have a shirt or something here. No, that's always cool. And I tell them to do that. You know, just just get this kind of shirt. You think I'd like this kind of shirt? Whether it's a long sleeve dress shirt, new polo shirt, new Harley shirt that Jason just got me. He went to two Harley stores in Wisconsin wow. and got me a shirt and a poker chip at each one. Wow. Yeah, I know. He, called he really me. spoiled you this he did. time. Yeah, he did. So. We're just waiting for uh, for position round. So we're just... Yeah, that's all we're waiting for. And I'm waiting for my beard to be done, which will be done here in about 15 seconds. And then at 7.30, and I got chuck? about a uh, you know, 35-minute drive home. And so I told Verna I'll be home around 8. So I'm, I'm be home about 8. So right you're, now... You're right, Sam. Eight kids in a family. Clothes do get passed down. But I was the one of the older ones, so I got to close first, and I passed them down. But anyway, <laughs> Will is going to read off the uh, going into position round. So we got our position round update, and 
Jason's gonna announce it pretty quick here, but you beat him to the punch. Um, you start talking. We're gonna we're gonna do it. Uh, so Jordan Manes is leading at 222 over against Kehoe's, which is number two seed, which is 202 over, and they are almost 60 pins above Cody Larson, who's 143 over, and Josh Kennedy. Um, after winning the last, he's actually won four matches, and he's tied one. So he's gone 192, 28, 164 for a tie, 180, 14, and he got to 111 over. So for the four seed, and then Zach Mitchell squeaked in there after shooting 205, 217, winning the last two matches at 102 over. And right behind Zach Mitchell is William Jones at 98 over. And Phil Stillmaker is in seventh at 94 over. Justice Schill is at 83 over. Matt Flone, who we were talking about before, is at 50 over in ninth. So he's, he's still in the... He could shoot a decent score and shoot and you know, oh, get oh, in there's, there's gonna the be, yeah. ladder. 50 pins out. There's about six people that can uh, get into there, yes. If he gets the right pair, if he gets if kind of... If somebody was to shoot 230 and win, they're going to move up into the ladder, possibly. It's just it, like last month. Yeah. I mean, Briley was in fourth or fifth. And he jumped up to first. And he jumped up to first of the 248. 240, correct. So, after Matt Flown was in ninth at 50 over, is Thomas Cleveland at 48 over. And Jason Cragen at 39 over. Nick Pluff at 15, Brent Newman at 11, and those are th your top 13. Dave Ullman at 4 under, so it kind of drops down after that. But it looks like the guys that are still that are still in it, I would say the, I would say they're the top 11. So 39. You never know what can happen. I mean, oh, correct. I was just looking at these scores here. So somebody's 11 over, say, 15 over. And if he wins, he's got the 30 pins. That's 45 right there, and he shot 250. That's 90 some over. So no, he wouldn't make it. And that the guy, the best something to do, who's 39 over? Um, that's Jason Cragen. Yep. He's the he's the last one that would have have a chance to move up, I think, because he'd have to pass five guys, and the two guys fourth and fifth would have to shoot bad and lose. The drop out. So, so I would I would say probably top eight. So eighty three yeah, over. They're yeah. kind of more in there, in the mix. The, there'll be some jockeying in there. The guys who are top five right now are not going to be the top five. The top two are going to be there, but yep. third through about seventh, six. Third's okay. Third through, third through eighth, they're going to be jockeying for position. I think that the Cody will probably make it. He's third right now, one hundred forty three yeah, over. If he shoots one fifty and loses. And that Which, could easily happen here. So I'm thinking third through third through eighth, that's going to be jockeying, and it's not going to be those same guys. I agree. And I'm going to find out on my way home <laughs> because I'm going to be driving home while uh, this is going on. So, Will, always good talking to you. You carry on, and we'll see you next tournament. You won't be there next week. Oh, because you're not a senior. Sorry. You can't bowl at Tex in the no. MSC. You only got 26 years more to wait. 24. 24. <laughs> I'll be 91. I'll bowl against you, though. Oh my Your goodness. first MSC, I'm going to be bowling against you. I'll be 91. I'm going to be, I want to bowl like John Kissel. <laughs> he bowled. John Kissel is the oldest guy to ever bowl a CBA at 88 years old. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Exactly. Ride motorcycles till he was 98. He passed away at 98 years old. A year and a half ago. I think the for my the rest of my career, the goal is to just beat Corby once in either a stepladder match or a match play. All right, match. That is okay, that is that, my goal for goal. the rest of my and career. My goal the rest of my career is never to lose <laughs> to Will Matafi <laughs> in a stepladder or a match play. Is to stay <laughs> what eight no? No, just undefeated. Just just stay undefeated. Just undefeated. We don't we don't need to discuss how many. Really, only three, but uh, it seems like a lot more because we talk about it a lot. That's fair. Yeah. But in fairness, we haven't bowled each other a lot because when you make the cut, I don't. Last month we both did. We didn't bowl each other. 
I haven't made the cut enough to bowl against you. Well, what's really funny is last month, uh, we both made the cut. Yes. And I saw Corby's sheet, ah, yeah. and I, I looked at him dead in the eyes, and I go, Corby, what does your sheet look like? And I took a sheet, and I was very sad to say that we were not bowling each I other. Know. Me too. I, any I, matches. I, I wanted to bowl against you. Because I, mean, I, I feel that that is probably one of the only fires that are burning yeah. for my career <laughs> right now. And I would have bowled better if I would have bowled against you. I think so too. I mean, yet yeah, I had to bowl against Ben Goldie and he had 148. <laughs> <laughs> then I bowled against Tom Jones in a match, like two two games, three games later, whatever. He starts a match, five, one, five, three, three, five, or something like that. He had like, uh, what the hell did he have? Like 21 in the third, <laughs> like something like that, whatever. He had 130 yeah, some. But yeah, it was uh, uh, it was tough. No, he went like five one. Four, five, five, four, something like that, whatever. Can't remember, but it was bad. Anyway, carry on. I go pay my damn my stuff out to the car. We'll see you um, next month. We'll see you next month. Hey, you can't bowl the CBA, the MSC at Tex, and you can't bowl the Senior Masters at Blaine Valero. I'm too young for that. Yeah, 24 years. Just yeah. by 24 years. So everyone's getting two shots on each lane. And we're getting into position round. Like we kind of were saying before is that the bottom three, so third, fourth, and fifth, and eighth, or through eighth, are kind of have, kind of will mix around much. I think that they have equal enough room to jump into the step ladder or kind of stay in the step ladder. It just all depends who they bowl. Um, like I said, uh, Keo and Jordan Manez have a pretty comfortable lead in the first and second positions, so it really all matters who wins that match in order to get the first or second seed. So Jordan wins and he would be the first seed, Keo would be the second seed, vice versa, if the other way around. Because there are only 20 pins difference. It's two, Jordan Mana's at 20, 222 over, and Keo Kuyan at 202 over. So, just have to win the match, and they will be the first second seed. Corby left us. So now they're starting their last game. I think the players to right watch right now are Cody Larson, who are on three and four. Josh Kennedy, who's also on three and four, facing Cody. Zach Mitchell's facing William Jones, and they are on seven and eight. Now, we said before that nine and ten is probably the best pair in the house, but right now I think it's almost the toughest. I see a lot of 180s and 150s, 110s. It's, uh, it doesn't look pretty on that pair. So I think that's kind of the transition between the, the higher scores and the lower scores. So anything on one through eight kind of seems a little bit more open or a little bit more softer is what we say. So Jordan Mana is up on lane six. He's your leading qualifier right now in match play. And he starts with a strike. Keo started with a strike. Jordan Manas has not won a CBA title. I don't think Keo has either. And Keo has bought a lot of these. So has Jordan. This was a 
So actually, I kind of want to go on that topic of of non-winners. So we have Jordan Manas, who has not won a CBA title. Keo has not won. Cody has not won. Josh, Zach, William Jones, Phil Stillmaker, Justice Scholl. I mean, a lot of these players that have been in the top eight right now, they have not won a CBA title. So I think we're definitely going to see a a new winner today, which is awesome. He was bowling for a very long time, but he has not won his first title. I was just talking about how um, the people in the top five or even top eight have not won a CBA title. What a great, that's nine, that's ten. Um, I honestly don't, that's eleven. It could be the top twelve. Yeah. Top eleven, I believe. Uh, Jordan, for sure. Keo's had chances, not quite. Cody, no. Josh has been there before, too, but not. Mitchell didn't? Nope. He won a Masters, didn't he? He won the there we go. Minnesota Masters. Yeah, there we go. Okay. He has not won a CBA title. Uh, yep, okay. So, uh, Mitchell, Jones, no. Stelly, no. Justice, no. Flown, no. Well, not this one. Uh, Thomas, no. <laughs> I don't, I can't, did Cragen win? Oh, yes, he did. I thought he, he won did. one. Okay, he so won top one 11. at the year end. Yeah, top 11. Yep. So the top 10. Top 10 do not have a title. And where was Kraken again? 11. Yep. So he's 11. So, so top 10 do not have a title. Corbett, leave his phone or is that yours? That's fine. Okay. And Kraken needs a lot. He needs a lot to get to get in there. He is 39 over right now, and the cut right now is 102 over. Okay. That was close. <laughs> So, so I think we're going to see a first-time winner today. Well, that'd be cool. That'll bring about all the, like, let's find out who's in the bet you wins. Yep. Uh, see if we got carryover. I'll go check on that. Yeah. Before we get too deep into this. Uh, are we in the, yeah, they're, they're done with practice. Yes. Yep. All right. This, this is your most recent one. Thank you. So I know William Jones is in the bet you win. I know... That Josh Kennedy is in the bet you win. Zach Mitchell's in the bet you win. I don't know Jordan Manas or Keo. So your top two, I don't know if they are in the bet you win or not. So if if you are bowling next month, you kind of want to bowl, you want to root for the bowlers that are not in the bet you win, so that it carries over. Especially this month, there were 91 entries, which is amazing for a CBA and amazing for the summer for sure. Uh, you want them, you want those uh, people that are not in the bet you win to carry over the next month because then it, it really gets up there. Cody Larson starts out spare double against Josh Kennedy's open double. And right now, they're not very much apart from each other. About 30, 40 pins from each other. Jordan Manas, he has a great, great look. He is one of two lefties, so him and Cragen are the only two lefties that made the match play. All right, crack staff is on that. We're on the bet you win. I, I was saying yeah, they're that on the bet you win. Um, I, I was saying that William Jones is in. I want to say Kennedy's in and Zach Mitchell. I would Ken, uh, Mitchell and I Kennedy. Know, I would say for sure. Yeah. There's guys in the second frame down there, and me and John are done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, well, good. Get in the booth. Chad, Chad just informed us that he and John Holmes are done yeah, with are position finished. round. They they are going probably home. I'll give that to you. He didn't drop it off. He dropped it up there. Yeah. You let me know who you against Janovitz. Janovitz. 
They were like, yes, we're going to practice and they go. Keo starts off triple. He's up on lane six. Let's see what he does. They did. It was just really funny to hear Chad. Yep. You know what? It's kind of what he's been doing all day. <laughs> Hasn't really been a time where Keo has struggled. Seems like one of his low games are 190 or 210. But he's going pretty good. Hunter and 20. 24. 28. 35. Kennedy rips that nine pin out on lane three. He starts up open four bagger against Cody's spare three bagger. It's becoming a good position round for the top five. Yeah. Um, Monon's in keyhole, 300 and 280 pace, uh, at one and two. That doesn't look like that goes anywhere. Cody, Josh, 290 and 279. Yeah. Doesn't look like that goes far. So then you start looking at Mitchell Jones. Three spares, three strikes and a spare. Looks like uh, William, thank you. Looks like William has the little advantage there and has the higher seed. And after that, you're 150 out of top. You're 117 out of fifth. So, right, I mean, a lot's got to be done for either Steli or Justice and Matt on lane one to have a chance. And neither one of them are having big games, right? It looks like there could be a lot of jockeying for position. Yep. But unless something happens big in the last five frames, there's just a whole lot of, like, Top five staying where it's at. Johnny, thanks for the little man. We'll do. Uh, crack staff got back. Jordan Monin's no. He Jordan, hold no. the full 50%. Cody Larson, the full 50%. Josh Kennedy, no. Really? Zero. And That's Zach, surprising. Zach Mitchell, the 50%. William Jones, the 50%. Yep. So, your, okay. your top six, wow. actually your top ten, there are only four guys that are in the bet you win. Good good, good chance at a carryover. That's very surprising. And obviously, uh, barring Craig and making the, the most courageous run in, in position round history, uh, it looks like we're going to have a new champion today, yeah, which Cra is awesome. Craig and started out strike. Spare, spare, strike, spare, strike, spare. So he's not really having a big game. Well, it looks like he might get another spare. The other guy is going at 240, 30, 40 yeah. pace. I mean, we're going to have a new champion today, and it'll just be cool to see whether, uh, you know, Kennedy can uh, run it, Monins can hold on to it, uh, and one of those two can make for a carryover. We love to see it. We always love to see new champions. New champions. New banners. New champions, and everybody that didn't bowl loves to see carryover of the bet you win. Oh, Keo! Front seven the hard way. As so, I said, that, that ball has been plugged about four times. So, we, don't, we don't follow the USBC... Uh, ruling on illegal balls quite the same, so we'll let his 18-year-old urethane pass. <laughs> Probably. It's actually a 30-year-old urethane. It is 16 pounds, he has <laughs> told me. And by now, it's with probably the oil a 14 in it, and a half. I was going to say, by now, with the oil in it, it's probably about 18 pounds <laughs> saturated for 30 years. That's true. Let's see if Manas can answer. He does. He's trying to make Keo fight for it. Well, and because it actually the who, winner, the winner of the match yep. is the number one seed. Yep. So that's what I was saying earlier. Yep. It's, uh, Whoever wins will be the yep. number one seed. And I mean, look, Jordan, he missed in the right spot. If Keo misses any time out from here, that's a washout. Pre previous to the tenth, 
and he's 279 and Jordan's got 280 if he can punch out. So yeah, Jordan was smart to miss in the second frame. As long as Keo misses. Correct. I don't know, if he keeps slinging pins like that, it doesn't look he's like he's He's been that to. way all day, too. I mean, Ooh. but so is Jordan. <laughs> Jordan hits his back with that flying I remember, pin. Jordan had 289, 88, whatever it ended up being there in uh, game two of, of the position round, or uh, match play. Yeah, he's... I that mean, was 9 to 10, wasn't it? Yeah. We said that's that's the best pair in the house. Well, we won't get there in the step ladder, so that's good. <laughs> we'll have some ugly matches. But I did. I mean, I did say that that's the best pair in the house. But it is playing very, very, very tough today. I guess for the right side. Keo, can he answer? No. And Ooh. there it is. Right. Uh, there it is. Jordan missed in the right frame. He really did. Yep. Yeah, it's funny. I remember a lot of talk when I was here at Bold League here, you know, a few years. Oh, Cody, back to back single pin spares. Uh, oh. Again, he's 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 pretty good. Eleven forty. Well to be honest, he's only forty five above William. And he's on who's at yeah, least two twenty base. On, he's yeah, I know he's two seventy nine potential. He has that max, but he is at least yeah, 220 yeah, pace yeah, for yeah. sure. So that actually could, that could be the one change we could see would be, oh, <laughs> well, that's a good break for well, Cody there. He needed that. He is Just at one screen on lane three there. That was uh, that was a big carry for him. He's at 146 in the seventh with a strike in the eighth, and then William Jones just uh, uh, crushed 10 for the Dead seventh. 10. Dead 10, Thank now Keo's 260s. Yep. <coughs> that would leave Jordan. Leaves Keo to finish. Right, but I mean, now the back-to-back -back there, you know, Jordan can yep. double up here and just pretty much Shot him put, out. A, yeah, put away the uh, number one seed. I'm going to flip. Well, yeah, I don't need to see Keo spare here. Let's go to watch this match here a little bit. So I didn't see that Kennedy had opened there in seven. William Jones just missed a ten pin in the seventh oh, for yeah, a buck fifty. He's at 156 right now. So he's, he's still, still winning the match. 240 max, still two. Uh, and Cody's losing. And he's higher than Cody. And he'd have the bonus potentially. Yep. And Cody could still get that. I mean, Josh opened the seventh there. I didn't see that Josh had opened the seventh frame. I didn't see what split he left there. But. I, I think he left a 4-6-10, okay. I think it was. Somewhere around that variety. Oh, and he kicks that nine out. Purple Hammer 5 flush for the uh, storm-wearing jersey guy. <laughs> I'm just funning. I mean, we tried with the purple... The pitch purple, but that yeah, didn't no, go that very was well. bad. Oh, and Jordan Manes on lane six, he just he just oh, three pins. Yeah, yeah, that's so now he has two fifty max against Keo's two sixty seven match. Yeah. All right, Cody doubles. Yep, yeah, yeah. Again, still two thirty six match against. Man, two. It just it hurts to see two single pin blows up there. It really the, the, does. The splits on this kind of a pattern are going to happen without a doubt. And nothing against Cody. He has made some big strides. I mean, he came in and started bowling CBAs as a junior bowler, um, and he was pretty raw. And, and he has definitely wheeled his game in and gotten a lot better. But it's a lot man, smoother. Yeah, those a lot smoother. A lot more balance in the line. Um, it's it must be that. Uh, that Kegel, yeah. That uh, yeah. Kegel teachings. There you go. He's up. He's first one on the ten. Little light two pin. So he has two teen but left. At the end of the day, the single pins. I mean, the splits got on make. a tough pattern like this are going to happen. They're going to pop up and bite you. But man, you got to nail all the single pins without a doubt. You want to win matches, you got to make your single pins. Yeah. So. All right, so Jordan Manas, uh, he has 259 he's left. He's got 49 max, and we'll see where it goes from there. This is going to 59. Uh, 
0919. Oh yeah, 59 max. Ah. So now he's 48 max yep. against Keo's 267. So Keo just needs to mark. Just needs to mark to lock up that yeah. number one seed. Yeah, because the bonus will give you the difference. And again, we if you are bowling next month, we want you to we want to vote for Manas for yeah, that carryover. No, yeah, we, we would love uh, Kennedy or Manas to win if, if you know you're you're not here today or or you're already gone today. <laughs> you know. That's gonna be a big pot. Yeah. Well it's only a one month carryover. It's gone out the last two months, so it isn't gonna oh wow. Cody to 15 final score. So he was up 32. So that's gonna, I mean, Josh should finish this off. Josh should be in the three seed. Yes, exactly. Uh, he's not gonna jump Jordan, because he's no, gonna shoot no, no, two. No. 40 at least. Yep. We'll see what happens to one and two. To 48 Jordan for Jordan's final score. Two. Josh will probably get to three. And then, yes. Yep. Now, William, I guess the Mitchell Jones matches. Well, is Jones, Phil making a jump? Jones, Jones, well, Stelly? Phil's not making a jump. He's. No. Fills oh, he's out of be it. 170. Justice. Uh, Justice will be uh, 220 tops, but that won't be enough, even with the bonus. Yeah, William Jones's max is. It's going to be 230. Whether William can get ahead of um, Zach, that'll be the deal. Because there's only I don't think she can get that far. She's too far back. She can't. Well, because you have William at one. You got 98, because he's going to jump. Because Zach might go backwards. Yeah, but he's got... So if William gets to 230, he jumps Zach, but then that fills the ladder. Yeah, but Zach goes, could go backwards, and Justice can jump him. If Zach goes backwards anyways, William's the one that jumps in by winning. William's outside oh. of it going in, right? So I, I agree with you. Justice can get the numbers to get close, but these guys that are already, yeah, I don't sure. think she can get in there. It'd be great if she could. I, I don't. Trip it. Yeah, she did. I just, I, it all really depends on what William does, but he just struck in the ninth, so he can go 238 plus win is 60. Yep. Right? I mean, he's going to get. I always think optimistic. I know, I get <laughs> I always it. Always try to. Try to do that. He needs a mark. But you were kind of thinking William was in it, and he's right. not. Yeah. He's the one that would actually jump Zach yeah. to get in. And Keo needs three pins. 36, 46, yeah. Keo needs three pins to lock up number and one then that'll seat. Just, that'll stay right there. And William Jones just doubles. So he's in. Yep. Keo, yep. he gets pins. He's the number one seed. Hold on. Yep, just enough. He got it. I just, yeah, I just saw him miss the head pin, and I was like, oh my goodness, he needed more than that, but he didn't. That, he needed that was enough. He, just, he needed three or more. Yeah, he got, he got enough. <laughs> yeah, so Kehoe will jump into uh, top spot. Jordan will hold on to two. Uh, looks like. I think Josh, uh, Josh goes into three. Cody hangs on to four, and I'm pretty sure William Morris just got himself Jones. Or uh, Jones got himself into five. Yep. Yeah. That's I believe how it'll come out. Yeah. Justice only got to two zero with thirty. That won't be enough. No. So everybody at home that's watching, hang tight. We're just going to jump right into the step ladder from here. It is going to take us maybe five minutes, right, to get all the scores calculated. Um, but just hang tight. We're not going to start a new stream or anything like that. So uh, stay here if you're watching. It's going to be exciting. As it always is.
But she did it at her home. She did it at her home.
All right, everybody, thanks for hanging with us. All right, they're just finishing up their last few shots of practice. So the way everything played out, uh, for those of you uh, that were asking about a minute ago, so yeah, we muted it just while we were doing the calculations of scores. So uh, anyways, thanks for hanging out, waiting for us to get around to it. Uh, we are going to get going into our first match of the stepladder finals. As things played out, uh, just kind of as we had figured, William Jones made that jump into the fifth spot, uh, plus 153. And so he'll be bowling Cody Larson uh, in the four seed. Uh, he got to plus 158, and so that's the match that we're about to watch. Uh, Cody uh, is the higher seed, and we'll see after they erase the frames here what he's decided to do, uh, have William start or start himself. And he's going to have William start the match. So we'll get underway here with our uh, first match, number four seed Cody Larson against number five seed William Jones. Uh, the way it played out from there, Josh Kennedy did jump up in front of Cody, got to the number three seed at plus 164, and then that's where the large jump occurs. We have... Uh, Jordan Monin's number two seed at plus 270 as we see William start with a strike. And then the number one seed Kehoe at plus 284. So they are, uh, or finished, I should say, 110 and 120 uh, ahead of the rest of the step ladder. You bet. Thanks, Clark. Thanks for rolling, as always. What's that? Yeah. There you go. All right, a little scoring issue. Let's hope uh, that's all taken care of then. Thank you. Hey, Dave. Can you grab me that qualifying sheet, please, from the board? Thank you. Uh, Kehoe was our number one seed. Only had to be over 200 every game today. Oh, this is after seven. Oh, well, that was what was over there. So I can't see. He really was every game? Yeah. That's I, don't know, I don't know about the uh, match play. Oh, the, all right. Well, let's take a look. For sure in qualifying he was. You have a game under 200? By Guppy Joe. Only guy. Not a one. Well, that's phenomenal. That's um, unreal. Yeah. Good stat, Dave. Dave Ullman, stat of the day. Stat of the day, stat of the day. Yeah, man. Um, that's impressive. Yeah, Keo, uh, I don't know game eight. He did. It was over 200. Yeah. 216 because I was right next to him. And I okay. gave him shit about, yep, just another 200, Keo. <laughs> so he went 211, 268, 249, 213, 233, 235, 203, and then 216. 216. Wow. Match play. 234 win, 213 win, 209 win, 214 win, 212 lose, 252 win. Shake it off. Wow. Yeah. It's a pretty impressive yes, performance. It it's, a, uh, it's a championship run whether you win the championship right. or not. Right. 
Wow, that's impressive. Well, here we are, knee deep in match one with a pair of doubles. <laughs> Making them look easy. Uh, Nava, Kiho is throwing the 24 pound um, blue hammer. Oil saturated for 28 years, original, plugged with probably some extra weight. Probably with Brett Wolf's <laughs> yeah. hammer that he won the Masters with. More than likely some washers in the middle of some ball plug. A couple of lead sinkers in and there. And she's about 24 pound. That is a good fact, Gene Jones. Uh, so Jordan Monins. Uh, Cody Larson and William Jones all bowled high school in the same conference. Uh, Cody and Jordan were teammates. So uh, three of the top five all came from the same conference, two of the top five, same high school. Uh, good news there. They're all young, and it proves that high school and collegiate bowling is... Uh, making a difference. Yeah, you know, making a move. I love it. And we're three for three, just like that. Yep. You could just be first guy to miss loses to move it along a little faster. <laughs> you know, I'm not angry at that format, especially this late in the day for me. This guy started, or yeah, 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 and nobody's, and nobody's missed, missed yet. yet. Sub this is in. this is obviously not the game you played today. Sub me in, somebody or, will miss. Or me. You didn't see this many strikes all match play. No. Yep, I knew it. I saw your scores. But I won four matches. You had a bunch of spare. You won a match with a 140. Yeah. Was, yeah. And I, wasn't, I was probably yeah. the only guy that fouled and ran out on the capping three times, too. <laughs> I thought you were chasing a grip that one time. I was getting, I was planning ahead in case I had deadwood. Testicle. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't have. Woo! You mean you didn't have a four seven ten crumbler? No. Wow. I got four through the middle. <laughs> That's the only four you had. That was pretty impressive. I got um, hit in the four. I had a one. That was uh, that was not bad. I'm just happy I sucked and still got the match play. Still got what? Still got the match play, but Dave beat me. You got to check. Just be thankful. Yeah, your wife paid me cash. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't for the bowling, Chad. You weren't supposed to say. No offense against William here, but I'm going to leave soon as somebody misses. So should take it. Kids should take care of this. Black clown. Oh. I guess it's Cody's turn. Yeah. You used to be good at predictions. Well, I just showed how bad my day was. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry. You're just bad First at thing I had all day. You're just bad at everything now. Yeah. Well, it's because I'm getting in my pre senior mode. So when does your uh, Kegel start this year early? I mean, Kegel like September starts or? September 17th, and we run every weekend then through uh, November. Uh, December, we uh, first two weekends have uh, City. So, there it is. You can leave. Well, it was a nice tournament. Thanks yeah. for hanging out. Yeah, thanks for thanks, playing. <laughs> Brought my tournament average down. Thanks for coming. This league average. Yeah, right. Remember now, I use this average when, when I come to the Kegel. Yeah, oh, no. 162. For sure. 162. I'll take care of it. All right, well, there's our first miss. Little crossover six pin. Glad to see Cody got that. Um, if you were with us during the uh, position round, he had a couple of single pin misses. And, you know, it, it might not affect his overall standings. We've talked a lot of times on the, the live stream about, you know, you want to be that 5-4 seed, get that first match in have to make your way all the way up the ladder kind of thing. Uh, stay loose, keep bowling. 
You want to be the one seed? Sit around for an hour. Then, you know, try and bowl. Oh, fortunate to get the 10 out there. Speed looked a little up there, maybe. Uh, he might be getting a little amped up. Obviously, there's a little pressure here with William having the front five on him. Uh, but he's still in this match. He's got to keep it slow. I've noticed as I've watched Cody today, he has a, a little bit of a desire to want to kind of get up on the line, lift up. Um, and I, I think the faster he gets, that probably is a little more pronounced and might create more issues. So um, kind of saw that again there. There he stayed down better. Good spare. Uh, anyways, he's still definitely well in the match. So he's he keep himself... Uh, Nice and slow, collected, and try to make a little better shot. Maybe not gas it as much. As always. Stelly, thanks for bowling. Matt, for congratulations. Us. Absolutely. Great bowling, you guys. Thanks for coming. Thanks See you soon. Yep. I love it. You coming to the Kegel? I think we're planning on it, yo. I love it. Yep. Beauty. All right, working on the front five here. Man, that was a good shot. Really good shot. Flush eight, nothing you can do. Make the spare move on. It does make the match a little tighter, uh, but nothing he could do there. I'd throw that shot 10 out of 10. No way. Am I on the, the big screen at Southway or just the little screen? Well, you can't see me anyway, so just put the bowling on the big screen, turn the volume up, and let's have some fun. All right, good spare, William. Yeah, I got stuck in the booth by myself. I'm a little... Uh, I don't know what the word is. Lonely? Usually I got a Corbett. A lot of times I have a pain. Matt. I got a lot of pains, but Matt, usually. Uh, sometimes a Mattafy. But I'm on my own today because it's 8.30 and we're in match one of the stepladder. Uh, but that's all right. Greatest turnout in the last decade for a non-masters event so we'll take that all right william let's see what he can do here obviously um if he's mm, good carry i was gonna say if he's gonna have a miss again it should be right there for the best chance of a tie because if cody goes out and everybody maxes from here uh any kind of a spare later would be hurtful, but uh, as it is, 279 pace for William, 268 pace for Cody. What a great first match. Uh, after watching a whole lot of struggle, uh, I kind of mentioned it earlier, and I thought that when these 24 uh, bowlers took the, the lanes for the match play after the re-oil, great shot, Cody, <clears throat> that we might see a little bit better play of the lanes we might actually see a little better condition uh as as it came down the stretch just because early on we had 90 bowlers that were spraying it from everywhere uh and they got ugly the match play has definitely i think been played a little more towards where the pattern should be played and uh well it showed the scores have been better how's it going terry thanks for watching All right, Cody here to keep the pressure on. I mean, he's uh, he's still 268 max. Oh, home seven. Really good shot. <clears throat> Cody has definitely made some great strides in his game, um, and we've, we've had the pleasure of watching. You know, uh, actually, we've had the pleasure of watching you know a handful or more of these uh william jones is a, a young high school player now collegiate that started bowling cbas you know we started allowing 
smart account uh, or having a smart account to allow juniors to bowl. And all right, good spare, Cody. Um, and and kind of encourage them to bowl. We want to, you know, try and build the juniors into the future bowlers. Um, it is great to see that, you know, basically three of our top five are, are products of that culmination of the, the programs, uh, the building on those programs. So um, wonderful to see the youth coming about. Uh, Terry, what are they throwing? William Jones, I'm pretty sure, is still throwing that purple hammer. I hadn't looked the last few shots closely, but... Yeah, that is still a purple hammer. Uh, I think Cody's got a Zen in his hand. I'm not sure of the surface of it, but I'm pretty sure that's a Zen that Cody is throwing. I'm going to guess it to... to probably have taken the shine off a little bit because it does seem to be a little bit smoother down lane. Great shot, man. These uh, these collegiate bowlers nowadays, a lot of ice in their veins. Uh, they really step up, make some great shots when the pressure's on. That's cool to see. Very cool to see. I mean, uh, Cody may have three nine counts on the board, but he is throwing uh, eight quality shots. Yeah, that is a zen, and that's another strike for Cody. Well, Cody is going to max at uh, 248, which would win you a lot of matches. Uh, today, probably just not going to be enough. <coughs> Williams going at uh, 279 pace uh, with only three shots to go. So um, Cody can give it his all here, but he can hang his head on uh, having a great match and a great tournament. Oh, as he crumbles a bucket just to put an exclamation mark on it. Uh, but a great tournament for him. I think his best finish, honestly, in the CBA. So a uh, great event for him. Yeah, Terry, you're right. They, uh, they are making it look easy a little bit here. But, again, I think when they got into the match play, you had the 24 best bowlers out of the 90 that were here. So they already were playing it probably a little smarter than the rest of the field or, or better for their game however you want to say it um, and so I, I think after the re-oil it didn't break down as bad well that's going to end up being a great tournament for Cody for sure I, I just didn't I don't think they got as ugly I don't, I don't think they got attacked from as many different angles and I think that kind of led into them becoming a little more playable. I think they played the same regions a lot, which opened them up a little more, and that's why we're seeing games of, you know, 230 versus 250 maybe uh, sitting in the uh, stepladder. My Kirkhoven math isn't helping me. Just like Corbett and I talked about earlier, we got 89, 99, 09, and he's got uh, teen, 20. Yeah, he's in the 30s already, just staying behind the foul line. Yeah, he definitely uh, played the safe shot, but that's smart. Yeah, I just... Uh, the strike was beneficial and... and awesome but uh that was pure preservation and again anytime i say this this is this is no fun on anybody that that did it but gutter balls were common today i mean when when your pattern is at the gutter at the twig 
um, and and William threw three gutter balls in the position round, uh, not position round, uh, the last round of match play prior uh, when he was on the camera. So, um, yeah, great shot. I, I think he just wanted to play safe. Uh, he's in the two seventies now, which is a phenomenal look. But I think that's a big deal right there on that shot. He just he knew he had the match in hand, and the last thing he wanted was to throw away everything or put it through the face for a split. So uh, super smart, safe move, and uh, he's going to move on. So uh, we're going to be in the 270s for William, 237 for Cody, a great score. Again, typically probably a winning match in your stepladder, uh, just not today. <laughs> that one came back and left a little dead 10, but... That was that was a half a mile an hour, or just a little miss right from going in the gutter, just like we had talked. It's it, easy to do, but uh, yeah, two seventy eight to two thirty seven there. Um, Josh, we're gonna go to seven and eight. William, seven and eight. Uh, I'm gonna mute this just for a second. Move the cameras over. Uh, give them instructions. Hold on, and I will be right back.
All right. Williams started nine spare there. Josh, higher seat, elected to have Williams start the match. Josh's first shot here. Well, obviously not what he was hoping for, not what he wanted to see, but it is a strike nonetheless. Endersby, thanks. Yeah, it uh, it was a great turnout. Uh, I'm still super surprised that we got this many in August in, in Minnesota for just a regular event. But Robbie Lawrence here does a phenomenal job of uh, supporting bowling, advertising, promoting. Uh, we had a lot of house bowlers here, and that's all Robbie. So hats off to him, and thanks for the help. Great shot, Josh, there. That was uh, no doubter. Get that first Brooklyn out of your mind. That was a good strike. Sandy, absolutely nice game. Uh, something to be super proud of. Congrats to William there. He earned that one. Good strike for William there. <clears throat> Pretty big shot here. I mean, it's early, but uh, it certainly looks like maybe Josh had a little uh, nerves, excitement, whatever. The first shot didn't make the best shot, but that second shot was good. And, uh, and he uh, is the higher seed, so he obviously had a decent look as well going into everything. There we go. Good shot, William. Well, I can tell you, we're seeing right here a whole lot of what I thought I was going to see all day, but just because of the way things started with 90 bowlers here, uh, they attacked this at every different angle there was. That was in again, yeah. So I don't know if it's that lame, because obviously that was uh, Josh's first frame where he went Brooklyn, or if it's him. Um, he just hasn't executed yet on that right-hand lane, but maybe there's more friction there. Either way, easy spare. He should make this just a six pin. Wow, oh, well, saw a fair amount of it from a few different people. I uh, can't remember who it was in position round we were looking at. Uh, thank you. Ed, a couple of single pin blows and that. Ed. I guess to me, those are the inexcusables. Um, and those are the things that you go back and, and look at. Spares are definitely at a maximum typically on this we've seen today. Um, the match play here or the step ladder here, I mean, has been ah, great shot. Uh, has been a little higher scoring, obviously, but um, for the most part, spares were a premium on this. And single pin blows just, man, they were costly. So we'll see if Josh can get around that. Uh, William did have a spare in the first frame, so. He's not perfect, he's not running away with it, but uh, that was a, a costly error potentially there for Josh.
Good shot, William. $30, hmm? $30. Cody Larson. All right, so now, I mean, Williams got the uh, the 290 max. Josh is the uh, 269 max. So six and seven, yeah. All right, spare four bagger for William. So now Josh is kind of in the, the preservation mode. Got a strike. Better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to say the first and the third were on him. That one definitely was further right. Stayed out there just like uh, lane seven looks for him. In a little. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's got. He's in the right part of the lane for sure, but right now Josh isn't very comfortable. That is uh, three out of the six that have gone Brooklyn slash high. Uh, he's missed a single pin spare. Yeah. He's got a. Got to try and reel it in a little bit mentally. Thankfully for him, he's gotten some breaks. Um, he carried the Brooklyn. Uh, he just carried that high uh, shot that tripped the four. So he's still in it, uh, depending on, of course, how William would finish from here. But I mean, he's he's definitely not like shut out yet. Well, still 290 pace. For six here, keeping the 290 pace alive. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a great look actually on both of these pairs, right? I mean, he had 278 last game. 278, 290 is uh, going to be pretty intimidating to the competitors you have standing in front of you. I'm pretty sure Jordan and Keo both have noticed uh, what uh, Williams accomplishing here. Well, Josh still, like I said, he's, he's still not out of this. Um, doesn't have the best look, probably doesn't feel the most comfortable, but his score is keeping him alive. Hmm. Well, he threw that one better, but... Results still left him with nine. Alright, good spare. Mm -hmm. 30, 40, he's got 50, 
six and seven to be strikes here. 80, team 40. Yeah, it's, it's, it is getting late. He's going to be 246 max. Williams got 290 alive, so Josh is uh, definitely a must strike here and hope for help. Home seven. Josh wants to win, he's going to have to hope for some help. Otherwise, William will be moving on, and he's still got 290 pace. For those of you at home hoping, William uh, strikes here, kind of shatters one of your dreams. One of the two that are not in the bet you in are out. If you're at home and you uh, you got ousted early or you didn't bowl today and you'd like some extra money, you should be cheering Jordan Mons on the rest of the way through the tournament. As we uh, We'll sit and watch William Jones, see if he can finish off a nice little 290. Either way, uh, he's going to move on and uh, face Jordan here in the semifinals on our next match. shot no more 10 uh, 290 but uh, nice easy 10 pin there All right, good spare. Well, that wraps it up for sure. We probably did earlier. And, uh, yeah, yeah, even, even with the like, Well, Josh wasn't the uh, worst game bold for sure. Got a chance to finish with 235, just like last game when we watched 237 from Cody not be enough. Uh, William Jones has proven to be a little bit of a bulldozer so far. He can max out at 250 after uh, 259 after uh, 278 his first game. So Josh can still, like I said, get himself to 235 normally when he match, but uh, today Williams making it seem a little easier than that. We're gonna take a little break after this match for about 10 seconds while I take a photo of the top five so Cody Larson can go home if he wants. I forgot to do that after the first game. So I will mute the mics for a short time and we will be right back with our semifinal match very shortly after the end of this one. Well, this will be a tight, uh, nice little match here then. So uh, I was just.
just told that Jordan and William are teammates at Sam uh, St. Ambrose University. So, we'll have a couple of uh, collegiate teammates sparring off against each other here after we get back from a, a quick picture break and uh, a couple of practice balls. Yeah, Darren, it really is. Uh, uh, Kehoe's young, too. Uh, we, we just mentioned it, um, and uh, I, I just saw your other pose, too. I'm pretty sure I just set the record uh, for the longest one-day CBA. I don't, I don't know in the history that anyone ever hosted a one-day that had 90 entries. So, <clears throat> yeah, we're definitely working on a uh, world record. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's late, uh, but it's been a great day. I'll take 90 entries in one long day a month, uh, 12 months out of the year. I think if we tried to ever go back to two-day events for some of these, we lose half the entries. So I will gladly work one long day a year or a month uh, to get this kind of turnout. All right, so obviously William is going to move on here. No, 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 Being the 260s, 278 is first match. We're going to move back to uh, five and six against Jordan here in uh, the next game. But again, if you are watching, I am going to take a pause, mute the mics for a second. Great shot to finish it off, William. Uh, and take a quick picture of the top five, and then we will be right back. Semi-final match coming up on lanes five and six here uh, in just a few minutes.
All right, here we are. Shot number one, semifinal match. Jordan Monins versus William Jones. I've been told now, collegiate teammates. Very cool. Well, and a great shot for William. William had 278 on this pair in the uh, first match of the stepladder. So, I mean, he, he also had... To 38, match two, so he's got a pretty good look going overall. Dana, honestly, thanks for reminding me of that. Um, yeah, we had two special Olympics bowlers at both today, and uh, great job by both of them. Fantastic to see them come out and participate. It is great to have them. Oh, Jordan, hmm. that's just a mental. You still got 279, so bear down and uh, get back in the match. Both of them actually are CBA veterans, so uh, neither are new to our tournament or format, any of that. And they both bowled multiple locations, but Michael Ladowick, the, uh, I'm trying to think of, ambassador, man, it escaped me. Uh, the ambassador for uh, Adaptive Leagues here with uh, Triple Shift Entertainment, so the 10 centers of Triple Shift. That just looked a little firm, too, there. Maybe some nerves setting in here. Uh, he had some time on a practice pair, and it probably looks different from this, and, and he's probably got a little, I mean, uh, I got bad eyes, but I think that says 1703. Might be just a little bit firm from where he was earlier, not giving it quite enough time. Uh, either way, uh, Michael Ladowick, uh, ambassador uh, for the Adaptive Leagues with Triple Shift, uh, or Adaptive Programs with Triple Shift, and uh, Eric Knobloch, who also works for Triple Shift, uh, employee here at Sunrise. So, fantastic to see both of them come out and compete today and give it their all. That's awesome. Jordan makes easy work of that seven uh, count spare, of course already appears to be a little behind the eight ball just because William had a really good look on this pair last match, two matches ago now, and a good look in the first shot. So we'll see how this goes. Obviously, Willem, good shot on that second shot, uh, our second frame. Make it a three-bagger here. Looked in just a little. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty good control of the match right here. I mean, Jordan is early on in kind of a, I have got to strike here and have a feeling like I've got a look. Was just told the two of them are roommates as well as they head into their senior year of college. Uh, 
Yeah, eight pin stands and, and another uh, well, struggle shot. Brooklyn, definitely not comfortable for whatever reason. Uh, whether the lanes look a lot different than what he, you know, had seen either coming into this match or on his practice pair. Nerves, whatever it may be. All right. Definitely got to find it. Got to get something going here. To have any chance to put any kind of pressure to make, uh, you know, William feel anything here. We need Jordan to uh, find a strike. Maybe a double or three bagger as well. Oh, there we go. Late 10. And we're on the board. I thought you had a question. Very long day. Sure, would you get here at 7 o'clock or? I was a little late today, 7.15. Left St. Cloud about 6. No. Yeah. You don't expect as many entries next month, do you? I hope so. Great shot, William. All clean through four. Um, that'd be great. I don't, but that'd be great. More money in your pocket. <laughs> huh? Well, ball at the center. I just love to see the. It'd be. I mean, the last two months has been what seventy something and ninety. Seventy nine and ninety. Sixty three. In in May or June. So. 63, 79, and 90. So you're averaging right around 75-ish. Yeah. So you got to see who's going to make the hike up to St. Paul or St. Cloud. Yeah. Well, first leg of the bowler of the decades. Oh. Little high flush, 9-pin. Easy work. Um, yeah, first leg of bowler of the decades. So, you know, you hope that gains some. Um, probably not a carryover bet you win. We'll see. If Jordan wins, the he bet you win would carry over. Oh, he didn't win. He didn't, he didn't go in. Yeah. But we'll see what happens there. But that would also add some entries, too, if that happened. How much is that? Then it would be like 1,000 or 1,100 to start. There's probably the first mistake I've seen out of William, I guess, in these first uh, two and a half matches there. Uh, 278, the first match, 237, the second. But front uh, front four and then a single pin whiff, he still is kind of in control of the match, so that's good. Sorry, uh, Brock, correct me, 260. I was looking at the screen over right there and I've seen the wrong score. Yeah, 260 in the second game, so. How are you? Good, how are you guys? Good, good. good. Been a long time. Yes. All right, so a little bit of help there and a little bit of an opening. Uh, let's see if Jordan can try to maybe add a little pressure. Yeah, 
just not comfortable. Leaves a five pin easy spare, but that was another crossover. Just doesn't seem like you ever found anything that made him feel comfy on uh, on this pair. He has definitely come a long ways over the last, you know, three, four years. Again, just like uh, Darren had alluded to a while ago, we, we uh, Darren Hansen had chimed in on the said like it's an MJBT reunion out there. It's kind of kudos to him and his organization and what they're doing and, and what they've become, right? I mean, these junior bowlers are definitely being molded into uh, some great adult bowlers as they move on. Four, six, ten. Definitely just uh, bear down, get your two, move on. So with two, 143 in the seven. Or uh, 45, sorry. Uh, but Jordan has got the opportunity here. Get himself with a, uh, a couple of strikes right back into this match uh, within just a couple of pins. Just nothing he can feel comfortable with is what it looks like. Has a ball reaction that makes him feel tight. Just can't seem to get loose. <laughs> get the ball projected to where he kind of wants to go. Well, an opportunity, uh, missed opportunity. Definitely still isn't over. There's too much bowling left there, so down by 24. We've got three frames left to go. the uncomfortableness of not having a good ball reaction and then having it mean something. Uh, William's kind of been at the luxury of having good ball reaction. Even though he makes a couple of mental errors, his opponent 
can't really do anything to add any pressure as they feel kind of lost. So uh, unfortunate for Jordan, I'm sure we will see him again in this position uh, very soon because uh, he has definitely improved a ton and has got a lot of talent and ability. We'll see him back in the step ladders not too long. Uh, William just kind of needs to uh, keep it within himself. He definitely has the, the better look, but uh, it's bowling. It's a funny sport. We'll see what happens. 145 in the seventh for William, 129 in the eighth for Jordan. Good shot. So even with two opens, William's got 230 uh, still in the bag. Jordan's best game maxing out is uh, 189. Let her wrap her up there. Williams just got to keep it behind the foul line, if that even. Uh, just knock a couple pins down. <clears throat> Unfortunate for Jordan again. Um, I mean, he led most of match play uh, right out of the gate. In the oh, little wiggly nine, uh, right out of the gate in match play. Uh, he had 288 game two. He had a phenomenal look. Just. Uh, Unfortunately, as it came down to the stretch, I, we've talked about it a ton on the broadcast, right? I mean, do you want to be the fourth, fifth seed and sit and bowl three matches, stay loose, keep going like William, you know, 270, 260, um, potential to go another uh, 70, 230. You want to take an hour and a half off, sit by the sidelines, come back in and bowl one match, but have to try and get loose and win. Pluses and minuses to both, but uh, unfortunately for Jordan, looks like maybe a little too much time off. Maybe it was pressure, maybe it was nerves again. Uh, I believe his first step ladder in the CBA. Um, so who knows what uh, what the deal is there? But he just didn't never he never looked comfortable. He never looked like he felt like he had a look. And that's always tough when. Your opponent, 540 coming in, and starts with the front four. Oh, thousands of dollars. Um, what lanes do you have a championship on? Uh, next match, seven and eight. That's championship. Right. Yep. So 13 and 14 for the U.S.? Oh, yeah. It's all good. I'm just getting banners down as... Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, I'll let him know. Thank you. All right, congrats, Jordan. Uh, not the finish you wanted, but what a great tournament. Great bowling. I believe your best finish yet uh, in a CBA, so congratulations on that. Uh, I'm going to mute it quick, uh, give instructions as uh, this finishes out here uh, to uh, Kehoe and William moving into the finals. We're going to move over to 7 and 8. Uh, stick with us. That final match will be coming up soon. Wow. Well, isn't that nifty? 
Yeah, I've never seen this converted. I got five bucks to convert it. Either way, it doesn't mean much or anything. Uh, William still has that match well in hand. One he gets to 179 for Jordan again. Great tournament, Jordan. Uh, you'll be back again soon for sure. Um, please get these guys started, and we'll be back on for our final match shortly.
All right, we are underway. Championship match. Looks like Kehoe has decided to let William Jones start. All right. It looks like we have new school Purple Hammer Urethane against old school Axis Drilled Plug 7 times Blue Hammer Urethane. Good luck to both. All square after one. So, cool part. Uh, top 10. All do not have a title or did not have a title coming into this. So we were guaranteed a uh, new champion and that's always fun that's always cool and exciting uh, both of these guys uh, young competitors always awesome to see that as well seeing the youth start to uh, to compete be competitive and win makes us feel good about the future of the sport oh win all right not Keo's best shot of the day for sure, uh, but a nice easy spare, five pin. Easy work of that. All clean after two. William, 278, 269. Uh, kind of a disappointing 201 with the pocket 710 there in the 10th, but what a great step ladder so far. Perfect through two. Seven pin by William here. Oh, single pins, right? More times than not, it always just seems to be single pins or makeables. You know, I have a hard time saying the word makeable now just because a friend of mine, Bob Miller, a lot of you know him, and a lot of people know Millerisms. Bob's pretty good at those, thus Millerisms. And he said, Jahan, every single spare combination has been picked up. Oh, same seven pin for Keo. And I said, yeah, Bob, that's probably right. 
and uh, <laughs> I just got a text from Gary uh, Ernson. Anyways, uh, anyways, he said, Jahan, every uh, spare attempt uh, has been converted, so they're all makeable. It's hard to argue. Point well taken. So we shouldn't talk about missing our makeables. They're all makeable, I guess. All right, good spare cue. Working on a pair of spares here. Oh boy. Well, they started looking pretty. Four six. Uh, the the text that Gary uh, sent me, uh, and and I do. I, I owe everything I learned in the pro shop business to Gary. Sometimes he probably would wish I wouldn't say that, like when I make mistakes, like now or earlier when I talked about Keo's 20 pound urethane ball. And he said, uh, I thought I taught you better. Urethanes uh, don't absorb oil. Reactives do. So uh, thanks again for the lesson. All right, we got uh, 66 now in the fourth for Keo, 57 in the third. What started looking like this was just going to be kind of a shootout has definitely settled down a little bit with a single pin whiff and uh, just a couple of spares and a split for Keo. So we, we definitely have a match. Let's see if both players can kind of reel this in. Uh, Gary, thanks always uh, for being teachable, uh, teaching me. I uh, can't believe I said that. I'm a little embarrassed. I, I'm, I'm going to have to go back to school. <laughs> Good shot, William. But I am happy that you've been watching all day. I oh, appreciate the support. All right, we got uh, William working on that strike here. Uh, he can get to 87 in the fourth, so he could, with a strike here and another one, get himself a boat. Uh, 21 pins up on Kehoe through four. Yeah, no doubt there, Nava. Uh, it is a good thing we got a match of, uh, amongst these youngsters because uh, you should get to bed. You work early. It's a Monday tomorrow. Way past your bedtime. William Morris, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, a long day today for sure. Oh, man. Ah. Uh, 4-6 wasn't his best shot, but the 7-10 wasn't his worst, so um, your thing can give that to you sometimes, make the best of it and move on, that's all you can really do. Hope for the best, try and get a little bounce. Well, there was the bounce, just didn't go the right way. Uh, yeah, I can't wait for Southway either. I, I don't expect, you know, numbers like this for sure, but the uh, Bowler of the Decade, uh, that that whole series is phenomenal. Thanks to Tom Corbett for having the vision to start that. Um, it has added entries. It has added excitement. It has added new formats. All of that is good stuff. And so uh, very cool for him 
who have kind of had that uh, that vision to start that tournament series within our tournaments. All right, Kehoe's got to get going here. There you go, good shot. I mean, he really had probably the best look all day. William uh, Matthews said it when we were in the uh, the uh, match play format. And he goes, Keo's the only one to have not shown uh, throwing a game under 200 all day. I, that's still mind-boggling on this. Uh, yeah, definitely some extremely tough conditions that they battled all day to not throw one game in what was uh, 15 games. 14 games. That's uh, very impressive. All right, William working on a double here, trying to do his best to just shut out Kehoe early. Both players working on their first title, potentially. One of them's gonna have it. All right, obviously I don't think he thought that was his best shot, but he'll take a turkey. Shot. All right, good four bagger there. He's definitely uh, in control of the match. Keo just really find, uh, found some bad breaks here. A couple of single pins that didn't carry, maybe could have. Uh, four six on a little Aaron shot, then a seven ten on a, a good shot that just wouldn't give the shape he needed. Uh, if he wants any chance, got to start now. Yeah, it looked like he moved uh, a little bit right with his feet, maybe squared that up a bit, or just maybe threw it a little better. better. But that was a needed double. Uh, he's only got 220 max, so again, he's going to need some help out of William as well if he's going to have a chance to win. Uh, both players, uh, for those of you at home, sadly, uh, they are in the bet you win, so the bet you win will get paid out tonight. It will not carry over in the next one. I missed in a little. Yeah. Yep. Kind of a little bit like Jordan. Uh, maybe that break wasn't the best thing for either of these guys. Uh, Jordan came into the semifinal match, never looked like he felt comfortable. Never looked like he, uh, you know, kind of got a rhythm or, or even really felt like he had a look. Again, William has been bowling since the, the first stepladder match where he had 278. And he's, he's really just continued cruising. Since then, for the most part, a couple of hiccups here and there, but otherwise he's just cruised along to uh, some pretty easy and smooth victories. Uh, he can extend here uh, to a five-bagger. Great shot. William finds his way off the sheet. Uh, Kirk Oven math gives me 267. Uh, minus a little hiccup there in the 10th last match, he would have uh, 278, 269, 201, 267 if he can uh, finish this off. That's a pretty impressive step ladder finish and will win you a title most times. Really good shot. Uh, 
All right, well, for Keo, great tournament. Uh, he has been here before. He'll be here again. He really does have a great physical game. And uh, again, he's, he's been in the step ladder. He's been in the running. Um, has, he hasn't got a title yet, but uh, I'm sure that is coming soon. For William Jones, it comes today, tonight. Might be the latest CBA one day title one. I'll have to check with Corbett on that. This could be a record too. Right here, it's all about William Jones taking the victory lap. Title is in his hands. Uh, it just needs to uh, real. I don't know, he really doesn't need to do anything. He can throw in the gutter if he wants. He can foul if he wants. He still wins. But you know, it'd be cool if he just strikes out. Well, there's one. Wow. I mean, not like the pressure isn't off when you know you got the title, so that's cool, but that was really good. The, the 10th and 11th were some of the most uh, flush shots that he threw this entire match. So, it's a, uh, that's a very cool finish to uh, walk your way into your first CBA title. Final match, 265 to 171. William Jones winning his first CBA title. Again, William went 278, 269, 201 with a uh, little hiccup there, and then 265 in the finals. Very impressive uh, step ladder run. Kehoe, second place. Uh, congratulations on a great tournament there. I made the date wrong when I said it earlier for anybody that was listening. September 11th, that's a Sunday, September 11th, CBA at Southway. I had uh, mentioned the 10th, that's actually the uh, Senior Masters at Bolero and Blaine. So, September 11th is the CBA at Southway Bowl, first leg of the Bowler of the Decades uh, Tournament Series. We hope to see everybody there. Thanks for tuning in. Congratulations again, William Jones, on your first CBA title.